You're watching the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Now, it's time for the Brandon Austin Show. Right, the Jaguars arrive at uh, team headquarters on Monday. Off-season conditioning workout begins. Looks like they had a, a pretty good turnout. Trevor Lawrence, Josh Allen, uh, Trayvon Walker there, and, of course, the guys that uh, you're seeing. I saw some video of Eric Armstead there as well. So the newcomers have arrived, and, uh, well, the – Wealthier guys like Foyer Aluakin, too. Mm, yeah. <laughs> He's feeling pretty good about that new uh, contract extension for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And we have arrived for a Tuesday here on the Brenton Austin Show on the Action Sports Shacks 24 7 Network. Brent Morton, Austin Lane, Nick Petty joining us in the uh, producing booth today. Hand be back tomorrow. Uh, and uh, we will. Have no gate fees tomorrow. Cup date as well. A week with Action Sports Jacks. As things heat up around here now, uh, Trevor Lawrence talks today to the media. So uh, we will have that uh, going on. And also Foyer Lewican talks to the media today. But really first time we've heard from Trevor since the end of the year. And I know he did his uh, Super Bowl tour. And we got some comments from Trevor then. But I don't think uh, he's talked in front of a microphone locally since the, the locker clean out on Monday uh, to end the disappointing 2023 season. Remember, he didn't need anything surgical repaired or anything like that um, from all the injuries. So I got to believe he's a healthy and uh, can't wait to get going here on this season, which is going to be an important season mm -hmm. for number 16 in Jacksonville. Yeah, obviously a guy who I think he'd be the first to tell you didn't reach his expectations, going to the playoffs. Maybe the numbers were a little lower than he expected. Injuries could have played a, a part in that. But I'm very curious to see what Trevor Lawrence has to say about this offseason, what they've done so far. Um, if he wants to see some more pieces come his way in terms of wide receivers and just what he expects from this team going forward. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things uh, that I'm going to ask you to do the impossible maybe. But what, like, what do you want to hear from – I might ask this a little bit later about Doug Peterson too. He, had, he addressed the team. But like, what's the message for this football team, like this new season? Because in my opinion, obviously the season really ramps up like later in the summer and training camp and you get that going. This is a, still the offseason. But I think you start laying the foundation mm -hmm. to everything that you're trying to build here in mid-April – um, very small parts of it, and you had this break from this collapse. I mean, the bottom line is we can't lose sight of that. Jags collapsed at the end uh, of epic proportion, really, and how will they bounce back? Is this the comeback season? Well, is this the comeback season for Trevor Lawrence too, right? I mean, coming back from injury, coming back from, like you just said, some of the the numbers weren't where he wanted them to be, and now you go into a year that you might have a contract looming and a big-time lottery ticket for Trevor Lawrence. So what do you expect to hear from him today? I what mean, do you want to hear from him? What do I want to hear? I mean, I think there's two different things. I think what we're going to hear is, you know, I don't think he's going to give you anything crazy in terms of, like, the shock value, the quotable stuff. It's, I'm excited to get back to work. We didn't reach expectations. We have a good group of guys. Like, I think – you know, I think that's any quarterback coming back during the season. What what I want to hear though is just his honest thoughts about you know the, the guys that they brought in, his honest thoughts about Calvin Ridley, how he feels confident with the receivers that he has right now, or would have to see another. I mean, he's not going to say, "Hey, draft somebody at 17. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, right. But um, also, what he, maybe he has to improve on a little bit, being you know, I mean, and I don't think he falls in this category. I think sometimes. Quarterbacks want to make up excuses and be like, oh, you know, I was kind of banged up. Like, I'm, I'm really curious to like if he talks about, yeah, I was injured the whole season and, and that's kind of what led to my demise. Or, you know, does he talk about I have to hold, I have to let go of the football a little better and not fumble so much and take responsibility? I mean, I think any player, especially a leader of a team, that can have an honest conversation with himself, evaluate themselves, take a look in the mirror, and be honest. I think players appreciate that in terms of teammates. Yeah, I think he is, too. I, I think he's in an interesting spot, and that's why I bring up uh, Trevor today. Well, because you can always bring up Trevor. But I think he's an interesting spot from an athlete standpoint. You just said it. I think he'll have no problem being honest with himself. Uh, but at the same time, he did have, to me, some viable excuses. I mean, he lost his most trusted receiver in Christian Kirk. He had Zay Jones banged up throughout the year. They had problems on the interior of the offensive line. He had injuries. Like, those are facts. Like, those are just facts. Now, that doesn't – some people look at that as an excuse. I look at it as facts and part of the um, information gathering if I'm Trevor. Sure, what can he do better? Probably he'll check 
a bunch of things off that list, including hang on to the football better. Mm -hmm. So I think he's in an interesting situation where you don't have to change everything now. They change some things around you. You hope better health for Kirk and Zay Jones. They add to the center room. Looks like they could still add to the receiver room. You hopefully are healthier and whatever that takes. Some of it's just luck. But then you do have to change things like, how do I do a better job of hanging on to the football, right? How do I just let the game come to me instead of trying to force the action? That's an interesting balance, I think, as an athlete that, you know, he, he's done a lot of good things too, of but you got to find the happy medium to make those more consistent. Yeah, I mean, I just think has he done a lot of good things? Absolutely. But being the competitor, the front runner, the winner that he is, once again, I think he'll be the first to tell you that he hasn't reached his potential. He hasn't reached his expectations yet. And, I, and I'm very curious to hear what that journey is going to look like of trying to get there, of, of, of what he envisions, what he has to do. And I get it. Yeah, stay healthy, get better protection up front. I understand all that. But at the end of the day, it, it still comes down to what he does as well. So I'm, I'm curious to see what that journey is going to look like. Of How do you become a top five player, a top five quarterback in the league? The dynamic that uh, we don't know for Trevor is just how much, um, uh, you know, is he, you asked this a little bit yesterday, like, is he clamoring for another wideout, right? Does he want to keep up with everybody else going on in the league? I think he'll probably be asked that to some degree, but that's also not in front of a microphone where you're most likely going to be like, yeah, we need another guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right? laughs> like, we need another guy. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he's going to really reveal that, but it's really behind closed doors revealing how much power in this organization does he have and obviously that comes with good play but you said something I think yesterday that that I think was dead on this team has um, given him more power this franchise has given him more power Doug has given him more ownership of the offense right this was when we were think talking about the ownership of the locker room Mm -hmm. and I think Doug's done that I think uh, Press Taylor probably has done that I think this is this is going to evolve into from Doug's offense to Doug and Press's offense to really Trevor, Doug, and Press's offense. At some point, the good quarterbacks take over the offense. Yeah, and at some point, you have to go up the reins and be like, all right, Trevor, what are you seeing? What do you need? And I don't think we're quite there yet. I think other quarterbacks have kind of had that luxury, other young quarterbacks, Joe Burrow being one of those, one of those players. I don't think Trevor's quite there yet, but this could be the year that you know, we finally reach that point, and it'll be a big year because, once again, are we talking about a contract extension going into the next off season and things of that nature? So, yeah, I, like I said, we're not to that point quite yet. I think the more weapons you give him, the more confidence you give him, the closer you can get, but it's still earned. It's not given. So, in, like, I'm about to tweet this, and, and you tell me if I'm accurate or not. This is Trevor's team, right? It's almost Trevor's franchise, and it can be Trevor's offense. I mean, that's the way this is designed to be. The NFL is kind of designed to be that way. Um, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. can you share it? Do you share it? Yes, yes. I'm talking perception. Okay. And not inside the building, they don't sit there and say that, right? They don't break it down like that. Uh, think about your office space or your workspace. You don't sit there and be like, hey, this is my boss's yeah, <laughs> yeah. building, right? I, I get it. But perception in sports is... It was Tom Brady's offense. It was Patrick Mahomes' offense. It's Lamar Jackson's offense. Mm-hmm. Like Todd Munkin's very good, but you know it's not his offense. It's Lamar. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, so when you're this kind of quarterback, when you're that kind of quarterback, you get the reins. The Jags are fine with ha- handing the reins over to Trevor Lawrence. So what I say is, there's a there's a lot on his plate to fulfill. There always has been, but there's even. As he morphs into this is his offense because this is year three with Doug. Like, that's continuity now. I mean, that's for the first time in forever in Jacksonville. We've got continuity on the offensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, it hits like a new step this year. This is year four. You got to go do it. We had Dan Orlovsky on a couple months back uh, on the show, and he's like, by the end of next year, you kind of know what he is. Now, a lot of people will say that after year three, but I think because of the urban year and things that got a little goofy, sure. I think people have kind of given a little more rope to, to Trevor. But you kind of know what he is after year four, which means you kind of know what this offense is and the relationship with Doug is after this season. Do you think it is Trevor's offense? Because I, I feel it's more of like Doug Peterson's offense or Press Taylor's offense right now than Trevor's. Yeah, I think I think you're right, but I think they started to morph that a little bit more last year. I felt like um, I'll, I'll say this much: 
when it went sideways, yes, you're talking about Trevor Lawrence, but more of the narrative, at least what I heard, was more based off of the play calling of Press Taylor and Doug Peterson. Yeah, it's of uh, Press Taylor mostly, sure. but yeah, I I think that's because everybody hates the play caller. I, that's like if Lamar, if Todd Munkin and Lamar Jackson are not clicking on all cylinders, they're not going to blame Lamar. They're going to blame Todd Munkin. Yeah, but I think with I mean Lamar played at a very high level, so you didn't have much to to pick apart per se. But I think even like Justin Herbert last year when he was playing, you can say a little bit like there were some plays where it's like. Well, is he regressing now? And then he got hurt, so it was kind of hard to get a big picture. But I think there's some teams where, if the offense sputters, if the quarter, you know, if the quarterback sputters, it's we blame the quarterback. Yeah, I think there's some teams where, if we're not getting the best presentation of an offense, we blame the coaches and coordinator. And I think the Jacksonville Jaguars fall on the ladder. Yeah, and, and that might be true, but I think that has to, that will change. I think that morphs into changing this year. That's why I think it's part of what's on his plate. But I think we saw signs of that changing last year. I think he had way more ownership last year of this offense. I think he he that's why you saw some of the body language. I think you saw some of the frustration, some of the lining up, some of the delay of games. Like get the call in. Uh, get like if if we had the mic. Like on the NFL films, Mike, on everything, it would be pretty interesting. Get the call in. Get lined up the right way. Like spiking the ball down on the ground. Like when the clock runs out and they throw a flag at the 12-yard line going into the end zone, you know, uh, on a delay of game. Like I, I can see that in my mind last year. Like I didn't see that the first two years with Trevor as much. I think as he's trying to learn his way. And it made sense. He's trying to learn his way in the NFL year one, and then obviously he almost does the same thing year two because it's Doug's offense, and they're trying to figure things out. And Doug says this all the time. He's like, it's not just like knowing the plays. It's knowing the why, why you're doing this to set up that, right? What you might see here that you see four weeks later. That's And I think we saw a lot more of that from Trevor Lawrence throughout last year. And I think some of the emotion tied to him last year and the frustration was because, like, I got this – how do I now make everybody else get this? Sure. You know? Um, and this is uh, – I, I think he could run it now. I think he could call the plays. I, I think he could I, – I think his confidence level in what they're trying to do is, is there. Mm-hmm. And so do we see that jump off? And maybe that's something that you don't always see. But I think this now morphs to what you just said. Yeah, maybe you put a little bit more on the coaches than Trevor. I think this year you're probably going to put more on Trevor than the coaches. Yeah. Right or wrong? Yeah, no, I mean it's it's, it's not wrong. It's it's got to be right because at some point we can't have the excuse anymore that Urban Meyer, you know, ruined you for. Can't have the excuse anymore that you're a younger quarterback. I mean, eventually you have to grow your wings and fly, and we got to see what you got. So yeah, this year is going to be that year. And once again, maybe knock on wood, there'll be an injury. Maybe there'll be injuries up front in the offensive lines. You don't get protect. Whatever the case may be, eventually those excuses got to stop happening as well. Yeah, uh, good morning to the chat, by the way. Uh, what's up with the rumors Desmond Ritter being in the facility yesterday? I didn't see that one. Um, the I did see uh, uh, Rattler. Oh, Spencer Rattler? Spencer Rattler. I wonder if they're confusing that, or maybe I just missed the other one. Uh, he's, <laughs> we're going to have seven quarterbacks and 16 tight ends. Uh, who do you think is better, Mack or Ritter? Eileen Mack uh, says, Daniel, I, I, I would say I don't lean. I like Heavy favor. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, time for Trevor to take the training wheels off and see what he's got. Yeah, look, I don't necessarily think this has been training wheels for, for Trevor Lawrence. Like, I, I don't think they've been on like that. I, I think there's a difference. I think you – training wheels was year one. Training wheels was really year one under Doug Peterson too, so it took two years. But I don't think – I did not see training wheels last year for, for Trevor. Like I said, I, I started to see him have some ownership of the offense, started to make some plays, start to – to check in the things like it just felt like it was morphing to his offense until the injuries. I mean, the injuries piled up and uh, that's just a fact. I've got some numbers here. The athletic came out with an article today and they're talking about EPA and all that stuff and the metrics fun. They they do every team. Yeah, I know. uh, So I won't bore you with the numbers, but we will look at the EPA metrics and just, this will explain it right from 2022. He was like, 11th in total EPA in uh, 2023, he was 71st. So, I mean, a huge downswing. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I got uh, on target catchable percentages, 31 rank. Actually, it's 10th ranked in 2022. 
in uh, 2023, 40th ranked. It was a percentage drop of like 5%. So those are just some of the numbers. Uh, now, somebody else did numbers. Uh, I think it was Daniel Griffiths, who we've had on before. He did numbers about uh, Trevor yesterday on uh, pre-injury and post-injury. Yeah. And, and, and again, I mean, they were they're, they're pretty, pretty much there. Uh, you know what it is. Mm. And that coincided with a lot of things. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. I mean, hang on. Let me get my subscription paid for right now for the Athletic because I'm I am moved. Yeah, with the numbers. Uh, Trevor, by the way, before and after injury, uh, he has EPA per play ninth before, twenty second after. Uh, success percentage fifth before, nineteenth after. Completion percentage dropped like eight points. Attempts per game went up by eight, which is kind of interesting during the injury stretch. Yeah, was that just because they were losing? Well, I mean, I feel like wasn't their defense going to pull out more points? So yeah. They probably had to keep up and yeah. score a little so, more. Yeah, it might be a li- that, like that's a number that's pretty interesting. You're hurt more and you're throwing more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> in yeah. that stretch, right? Yep. Uh, touchdowns went from 14 to seven. Interceptions stayed the same, and uh, the NFL rating though went 94.5 to 74.1. So, I mean, again, it is what it is. They have to look at the whole compilation of it and uh, and figure it out. And and I, I honestly think if there's one thing. Trevor Lawrence gets better at. G- give me two things this year for Trevor Lawrence, and I think we're going to be okay in Jacksonville. One health. Sure. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just, obviously, that's the obvious for probably every quarterback in the National Football League. And two is, like, I don't know what the over-under is, but let's go, like, can we do, like, two and a half on fumbles or something? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I don't know how many he even had last year, but it felt like 11 or 12 or whatever it is. It's been a lot of fumbles. Mm-hmm. So... Honestly, I think it's the fumbles. It's not the interceptions. We've talked about this before. It's more the fumbles, more the pocket stuff. And I think that lends to what I said earlier in the in the show here. Let the game come to you more than trying to force the issue in the game. Yeah, I mean, I think when we talk about that, though, you have a quarterback who is obviously trying to make up for mistakes made by other players, whether they're false starts, whether they're holding penalties, whether they're drop balls, turnovers, a defense giving up a big play, that you got to come back out there and score right away. Like, I'm very curious to see... I mean, all these numbers and everything. Someone's got to do it, and it's not going to be me because I don't have the time, effort, or energy, or subscription base <laughs> where I'm going to do this. But I wonder what it is in terms of the times that Trevor Lawrence has fumbled or made bad plays. In terms of the plays before that, huh. what was like a drop ball? What was a holding penalty? Or a turnover from the previous drive? Or you give up a touchdown from the previous drive? Things like that. Like, what happened in the previous drive And did your defense kind of leave you out to dry a little bit? I'm very curious to see what those numbers would look like because from my recollection, and it's probably not a wholehearted scientific fact, but from my recollection, it always seemed like when guys weren't helping Trevor Lawrence around him, that's when he started to play outside of himself and make those mistakes. That's a great call. Um, Get on it, somebody. I'm not doing that either. Hey, Athletic, go ahead and sign me, you know. Um, that, that, listen, I think that's I, – I don't think you're totally wrong there. I don't know if it comes after bad plays or mistakes by other players. I think it could have come with all the – I mean, just breakdown of plays or, or just trying to do too much in, in a certain, like, snap because we've seen that throughout his career. Like, he has tried to do too much. At, I mean, I go back to – I always go back to that Washington game in, in first game under Doug, I think it would have been. And, I mean, he got out of field goal range twice with, like, intentional grounding plays Mm. just trying to avoid sacks like take the sack take the sack and we'll see like Doug said you can coach those kind of things into him he wasn't concerned about the fumbles and everything else every time we've asked about hey this is your guy right this is your guy no wavering concerned about no we can get that out of him we're okay we can get that out of him so I think it's that and it's also things like take the sack because here's the deal they go hand in hand usually <laughs> if you're not taking the sack those are the plays you're fumbling on correct yeah right? yeah yeah so yeah. so I think um yeah, it's going to be fascinating to watch his growth curve but without taking the aggression you you want to stay aggressive you don't, you don't want to be gun shy right i mean yeah. that's a delicate balance and i think he's done a good job of that i think he lets it fly most of the time and he doesn't play scared or anything like that um it's going to be a big year uh, for for number sixteen in Jacksonville is no doubt about it, but I, I don't really think it's like a career on the brink here. It's more of get it back to where we thought it was and and start elevating, start ascending again. Coming off the last six weeks, I mean, I hear you, but also I would love to see a career year because you're going into essentially 
probably a new contract. So I think from just the security of knowing what we have, I wouldn't mind seeing a career year out oh, of yeah. Trevor Lawrence. Well, that's not going to take much, I don't think. No, I mean, in terms of like what his stats have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, sure. I, like, he hasn't set, like, it's not like he jumped out like a Burrow or a, or a Herbert and, like, oh, now you got to go throw 40 touchdowns to have a career. No, year, I mean, his most productive touchdown year is 25. Yeah, if you can get that to 30, yeah. You know, and I think now we're talking a little bit. And once again, I understand the injuries are an excuse and all this stuff as well. But at the end of the day, injuries don't make up for you holding on the football too long and then fumbling it. You know, like, yeah. you don't blame injury on that? No. No, no you can't. That's, that's yeah. got to be your decision. That's got to be your decisiveness and, and your mental IQ as a quarterback. So we hope those things get cleaned up. Yeah, listen, uh, he did, um, you know, he basically dropped off on percentage last year, uh, had like 100 less yards, four less touchdowns, six more picks uh, than previous years. Um, he got sacked eight more times than uh, he got sacked the most in his career last year. Thirty, and he missed one game, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the in twenty twenty two is his barometer year right now. I mean, he's sixty six percent, four thousand yards, twenty five and eight in terms of touchdown and picks, and a rating of ninety five point two. I, I didn't even realize this, but uh, did you know that he was like seventh in MVP voting and also twelfth in comeback player of the year voting? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right on. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, very. Uh, and he didn't make the Pro Bowl that year. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, obviously, from an alternate point of view. So, yeah, listen, I, I, I don't think the bar is that. Like, I think he's he's going to throw it 575 to 600 times in a season. Like, that's just going to be the way it goes through Doug's offense. Sure. He's probably going to be able to compete nor- complete north of 65%, I think, with the continuity that they have in this offense. I do think you're right. I think he needs to have, like, a 30-touchdown year. Like, and, and the Jags have... I always say this, like you can have your quarterback get touchdowns like in those goal line situations mm-hmm. <laughs> more like teams do it. Teams like first and goal roll out and instead of just handing it to the back, it's like an easy touchdown. All right, start padding those numbers early, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I mean, you you seriously can manufacture some of those numbers. And then obviously the the interceptions, but the interceptions don't bother me. It's seventeen his rookie year, and a lot of those like he had two, I think four interception games where it just was like I don't give a damn. It felt like, mm. um, but the eight in year two and fourteen was up. But I think when you throw it six hundred times, you might have a dozen interceptions in a season. Like I don't think that's going to bother me. It's the fumbles that uh, will bother uh, everybody and what they can do in crunch time, of course, uh, at the quarterback position. So big year coming uh, for uh, Trevor Lawrence. We know it. Uh, what does it look like? It starts kind of this week, and one thing we still don't know: who's calling the plays? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think everything, all signs lead to Doug Peterson, but until it's official, it's hard to say. Yeah, it's, uh, do you think we find out that out today? Nah, nah. Well, I mean, Doug doesn't talk today. Oh, he doesn't talk today. Uh, okay. Doug talks Thursday. Gotcha. But it's more draft oriented, so I'm not really sure. I mean. Every time I've seen Doug, I've asked him the question, are you calling play? So I'm not sure if this will be the setting. Do you think he knows already? Do you think the team knows? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, That's Trevor then. You know, the, the, um, the reason why I say I think so is the last time, like it had been just a few weeks from the combine to the owners' meetings, <laughs> and he acknowledged that when I asked him about it. Yeah, it's just been a few weeks. Yeah. But I think the fact that he hasn't, Said no, like I'm not. We're getting this out of the way now. I'm not calling plays. I think lends to what you think, right? That he's going to probably call the plays. He's going to pull that back. But I think he also. I could see this, Austin. I think for whatever was going on last year, I think he wants to get comfortable probably in these next couple of months to just confirm that part, mm. right? Like with Ryan Nielsen, with what's going on with the newcomers in the building, like. Whatever he was going through last year that decided, hey, it's not in my best interest or the team's best interest to do it, I think he has to check those boxes probably personally. Yeah. So I don't think this is going to be an announcement today, this week. I actually think this will come in a quiet conversation somewhere along the way, slipped in there probably sometime in in uh, in the preseason. Sure. I mean, I think that's how it's going to get re- released now. Could be wrong. Um, but uh, – and I'm not sure if, if Trevor will shed any light on that or not. I don't think a guy like Trevor in this spot, by the way, also cares. Like, I think he trusts Press Taylor. I think um, – Yeah, but if you're a quarterback, you want to know who's calling the play. Come on. Oh, no, no. Yeah, you do, but I don't I don't know if he's going to be the guy to reveal it oh, first of all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. And I also 
I, got, I just don't know if it's as big a conversation inside the building as it is outside the building. I wonder those things. Hmm. Uh, because I think they might look at it as a collaborative effort. No, anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I got you. Um, my, my guess is he was hearing both voices. <laughs> yeah. M- maybe Urban's voice is still in there as well. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe too many voices. Maybe too many voices, yeah. In, uh, in uh, Trevor's um, ears. All right. Uh, Trevor does talk today. Foyer uh, Lewican talks today. Draft luncheon later this week. So we've really got a lot going on uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars, which is kind of fun. Let's take our first time out, and uh, we keep talking Jags. What is Doug Peterson's message to this football team? Um, and and some of the other players that have huge years on the horizon. Uh, the Jags have a lot of talent, they think. They have a lot of money spent. They have a lot of investment on this roster. Draft capital to actual dollars. Who really needs to step up and prove it and show it for a big year for the Jacksonville Jaguars as they're going to bounce back from a disappointing finish to 2023. Off-season conditioning underway. A lot of Jags talk. We'll get around the NFL. And, oh, Caitlin Clark steals the show again. Coming up on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. You can find us on the Action News Jacks app at actionjacks.com. Everyone loves a good game night. Here you don't have to be the host. You don't have to clean up. They bring the food and drinks to you. And you can watch whatever you want on the big screens. It's more than a card room. It's a night full of fun with friends. Best Bet Jacksonville, Orange Park. And now the newest location here in St. Augustine, right off 95 at exit 311. A brand new clean room. A full bar and menu. My favorite sushi in town. And I love the fries too. You don't have to just play poker at Best Bet. That's why I come over here to the table games and play one card poker. That's a pretty good card and a win. One card poker is like war as a kid. You against the dealer. And this isn't the only fun table game to play. A friendly staff, a lot of fun, it's a good night out at Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park in the newest location in St. Augustine. You can be a serious player or a novice, it doesn't matter. If winning equals fun, you're a winner every time at Best Bet. I'll save you a seat and I'll see you down here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked? stained or just plain ugly spartan coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous easy to clean antibacterial and slip resistant all with superior durability living in florida nearly my whole life i know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor that's why i had matt and the crew from spartan coatings transform this space and the best part they did it in one day It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provides superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings dot com today for your free quote i like to say everybody has a story and sometimes we're a part of other people's stories that's the case here at nimnik buick gmc my family and the nimnik family we've purchased six different vehicles from nimnik buick gmc maybe you're in the market for a truck well let me tell you about the gmc sierra i absolutely love mine i've had a couple of these this one's a 2020 but right now on 2024 gmc sierras here at nimnik buick gmc there's special financing a year ago we purchased a gmc terrain for the kids financing rates as low as 0.9 percent for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. Thank you for making Action News Jacks the best in Jacks and Folio's Best of Jacks 2023. Best TV station, best TV newscast, best TV morning show. Chandler Morgan voted best TV anchor. The chief, Mike Burrish, voted best meteorologist. And Brent Martineau voted best TV sports anchor. And while you're on the go, best news website and best local blog, the Burrish blog. Thank you for making Action News Jacks local coverage you can count on. 
It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24 -7. Welcome back to the Fred and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 network. Well, what's in a free throw? How about free chicken for everyone? Or chicken for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this was awesome. This is amazing. Did you see it? Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, if the free throw gets missed, mm -hmm. the fans get to you know, one of those deals where it's like, you know, they've done it with Taco Bell before and other things like that. Yeah, so the, 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 the Clippers have a thing where if a player misses two free throws in a row, they get free chicken. <laughs> and Boban looked like he was trying to make the first one, didn't go in. He understood the, the magnitude then of the second one, being one of NBA's folks' biggest stars. He said, you know what? Let me put the city on my back in L.A. and let me give these guys some free chicken. Yeah, and so then the fact that he acknowledged it after two was it just was, the, That the was the best part. I, I thought, it's funny you said that. I thought that was the best part as well. It's like he was like, give it to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, give yeah. Give it yeah, to yeah. me, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I mean, even like you can tell right here, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Everybody chill out. Everybody relax. And keep in mind, like, you know, he's trying to win the game and everything, but Houston's out of contention. The Clippers are already locked in, ready to roll. So you didn't have that much to play for. Some people <laughs> might want to feel a certain type of way about this. I think it's oh, funny. Is he getting any criticism for this? Well, I mean, I don't know. It was an eight-point game. Yeah, but eight-point game means nothing. I know, you know the like, NBA. It means nothing in the NBA. There you go. They do not. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh... It was Chick Fil A, by the way, and this is why I guess people do these promotions yeah. because uh, when it hits, it hits. Yeah, Not that yeah. Chick Fil A needs it. <laughs> <laughs> but Boban's like every single year, though he pops up for some reason, like in, in the best way possible. Like, he was in John Wick three or four. I can't remember now. I think it was John Wick three. He was in. Uh, made a little cameo there. Like that was cool to see. And then like there was the whole thing where I forgot like what the context was, but like. And I forgot who even gave him the props, but he was like, you know, the friendly big man. Like, he kind of, like, had, like, a, a meme about him then that he's in commercials and everything. Like, Boban, honestly, like, he's not going to be an all-star. Let's, let's call it real here. He's not going to be an all-pro. But, like, what he's been able to do just with his personality and just, like, his outgoingness, like, he's maxed out. His potential on that. Yeah. It, you know, he, he looks like a character, right? Like, I mean, he just looks, he does, it looks like a movie character. He looks like a fictional character in many respects. Yeah. Um, and I think he plays into that very nice, you know? Uh, the As far as in-game promotions go, I mean, this one, like you said, it was fourth quarter visiting team misses two free throws. That's how you get it. Correct. I love to know the behind the scene meetings on like in game promotions. <laughs> yeah, I think in the World Series, don't they do like if he has a steal, you get a free taco? Taco or something Bell does taco it. Bell. If, uh, if someone steals a base, yep, you get a free taco. And a lot of t people will do like, hey, take your ticket stub after the game. But I'm trying to think of some really good ones. But hey, free chicken sandwich isn't a bad one. 
No, I can't be uh, mad at that. That's, that's, a, that's a good one to uh, get involved with. So um, the meetings for those must be great brainstorming. Like, can we do this? Can we do this? And how many times will it happen? Yeah. Right? Because well, that's what you got to figure on. But, but think about this, though. It's a genius move because then that gets the crowd more fired up. Or more be, fired. Be because now you're trying to cheer yes. for that player to miss two free throws in a row. Like, yeah. It, it, it gets the crowd It involved. actually checks right. a lot of boxes, right? Checks I mean, it kind of helps your home team out. All that stuff, and you're taking advantage of something that helped the home team out. Um, so yeah, that, that was uh, that was pretty good stuff. Uh, Jags offseason conditioning uh, underway. Brent Martineau, along with uh, Austin Lane and Trevor Lawrence, talks today. Foye Lewican uh, talks today. Uh, before I get into, have you seen uh, Night Agent? Have you heard of that show, Night Agent? Yeah, I have Netflix. not heard of Night Agent. No, I'm locked into a show right Night now. Night Agent? No, I've I've been on that th- three body problem. It's called. What is that? Uh, it's from the makers of um, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Okay, um, where is it? Where it's on. You, it's on it's Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Is it good? Yeah, very crazy, but very good. Like very hard to follow. I'm, I'm four episodes deep right now. Uh, this is good. I think you'd like this one. I'm Night not Agent? sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing like the, like the like the trailer kind of thing here. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it's checking some boxes. Action. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. It's kind, it's kind of like going yeah, with Jack good. Reacher's. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, mean, I I'm a sucker for a little bit of that stuff. And oh, God. He got nominated for a People's Choice Award. Did it really? Yeah. Is it new? Or did I? Because I, sometimes I catch on to these things like five years later. So I think I it's pretty new. I think it's newer, yeah. But the kids, see, this is why, I, like, even the kids are locked in. Okay. And uh, then I think Kaylee said season two's coming out. Like, they've already said it's going to come out, like, later this year. Well, here we go. FBI agent Peter Sutherland is thrown into a vast conspiracy about a mole at the highest levels of the United States government. To save the nation, he plunges into a desperate hunt for the traitor while protecting former tech CEO Rose Larkin from the people who murdered her aunt and uncle. A lot going on there. Okay. I'm going to need a better plot than that, but I'm not going to lie. Like This is, like, the official plot. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's there's some subplots that are really good. Oh, oh, apparently, apparently a CEO of a tech company's uncle got murdered with I, her aunt. I've, I've thought a couple, you know, it's one of these where you think a couple of different times you've got it figured out. Sure. And so far you, you haven't. Okay. So we'll see if they're able to off in season two. But um, I haven't watched a show in a long time, and this one, like, I kind of can't take my eyes off. Okay. For right now. I'm about to check it out then. Might be looking at some five minutes in commercial break. Okay. Just watching it. One of those type of deals. I can put it in the queue. Um, check it out, Nick. Check out Night Agent. That's the one I've got for you. If you haven't seen it, Nick, uh, we start calling you Nick in the day because it's not Nick at night, but Nick in the day. Um, <laughs> have you seen Night Agent? Hey, there you go. I don't mind Nick at night though, but hey, okay. Nick in the day, I'll take it. <laughs> Nick, have, have you seen Night Agent? <laughs> no, actually, I haven't. Have um, you seen the Three Body Problem? That I haven't either. I hadn't oh, heard wow. of that one. Oh, night wow. Agent, though, I've heard of. Okay. Night Agent, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd seen some stuff about it. Another one to check out that's fairly new that released the other day on Amazon Prime, uh, Fallout. It's based off a video. Oh, game, yeah, very, yeah, very, yeah. I finished yeah. it last night. Good? Oh, great. Okay. Oh, the end wow. of it's fantastic. Sorry, Brent. Then, that's going to have to move. Uh, that was the, most, head of Night Agent. the most exciting I've ever heard, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> that must be really good. You didn't see me after the Alabama win two years ago. Then. <laughs> Hugged Weber that night. fan, by the way. <laughs> he <laughs> hugged Weber. That was yes. uh, that was different kind of excitement. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, hug a Florida fan, Please man. don't get that excited ever um. again. <laughs> um, <laughs> Matt liked Night Agent. So what was yep. the name of the one you just said? Fallout? Fallout. Yeah, Fallout. And you said that's video from like game. a video game? Yeah. yeah. So they made a... a it's a, not a movie, it's right? An it's an adaptation. A, nice a, word. Adaptation. Nick in the day. Uh, is that what that is? Yeah, it's an adaptation. It's a, it's a TV series, but it's, yeah. Based now, off the do video I have to game. know the game to enjoy the TV series? It would help. Uh, no, not really. No, it, I mean they it ha- follows something that's not. I mean, it's just lore of the world. It's not actually of any of the games. It's but so, but, but, but the characters other. are there, though. No, they're all standalone. Oh, okay, never mind. They're not from any game that you've seen before. I stand corrected. All right, at least to my. Oh mind. no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the other one. Um, Borderlands. Yeah, see that one I haven't played. My bad. Sorry. Is there a yeah. show for that one? I think there's a show for Borderlands. Oh, yeah. Then hey, you know more than I do on that one. Right, been, see, you started. It would have been right on brand for me to come in here and have watched Fallout and not even know it was like a video <laughs> game. and been like that thing was awesome. You guys should check this out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. So they're making a Borderlands movie that's coming out soon. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. I'm all over the place. How right common now. is that? The the coming off of the video games is that seems uh, to be the biggest thing right now, Brent. They oh, made a it, twisted so metal a newer thing. 
I think it's like a newer ish thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because people are starting to run out of ideas of what to make for movies and TV shows. Yeah. It seems like. I always say that. I mean, I'm pretty impressed when you can make something that sticks. Yeah. Because it's hard to reinvent the wheel. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I think people like certain genres and everything else, but I mean, there's so much stuff out there. Yeah. And so much stuff that needs to be out there because of the five million different ways to see it. Mm hmm. That when you do have something that kind of sticks, and if you get my attention on it, it's probably decent, <laughs> or at least because <laughs> like I'm not watching a lot of the stuff. No, for sure. Um, but I kind of can fall into a lot of stuff that I like. I just don't find myself there and, and even checking it out. But this one's been good. I don't even know how. I think I just I didn't even had, hadn't heard of it or anything. I just flipped it on and it was like I'm gonna check this out for a few minutes, and I got locked in. That's wild that you can just turn something on and it's like I'm gonna give it a chance. Like I have to do some research. I gotta I gotta see reviews, Brent. I can't just go in willy nilly, just all caution to the wind. Well, you my told time me, is precious. You, didn't you tell me to watch Mayor of East Town? Yes, Back, that was great. Yeah, come like, on. So Brent. people haven't seen that. That was great. Yeah, come on. So Brent. now there's like Mayor of Kingstown. Seriously? Now that's different. Not okay. mayor, but mayor. Oh, the mayor. Yeah, I got Have you. you. Seen okay. that? I don't know if you've seen no, that. No, I haven't seen that, but I, I know of that. So yeah, I, yeah. I watched a little bit of that, and then I kind of went away from it. And um, I think there is season two now. So I might get back into that one a little bit. Okay. Uh, but Jeremy Renner, uh, yeah. Hawkeye's in that one. Yeah, yeah. Mayor of Kingstown. Okay. And um, so anyway, I got to have something to keep me uh, solid until Yellowstone comes out. Chill out with a that, little huh? bit, uh Oh, when is there another season coming out pretty soon of Yellowstone? Hey, why be 400? Why am I so old, man? I mean, what the heck? Yellowstone, though, right? Little, little bit of an older show, I think, for all the old olds out there. Is there a new season of Yellowstone coming out? I think it's the By last the way, season. How many adaptations or adaptations? How many like prequels, spinoffs are does Yellowstone Probably have? Too now? many. 18, 19, 25, 27. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> just, just numbers <laughs> putting together. Seriously, there's like ten different adaptations. Or whatever you want to call well, it. We're gonna have our own. It's gonna be 1937. Cool. Yeah, right. 1937. Okay. 1937. That's actually a restaurant in town. They're gonna be jumping on board with us here. Oh, on the can't Brent wait! Show. So it's our own version of this Yellowstone. This season on Yellowstone, <laughs> the cows came back. Oh man, <laughs> Kevin Costner's got a dip in his mouth. Whoa! <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts. Hey, Matt Master, somebody send him a gift. I'm 33, which is Larry Bird, and like the same shows as Brent. Come on, see that. Starting to think that that's Brent's burner account. <laughs> Matt Mass. He's always typing on his. He's always typing on the laptop. That's Brent's burner. <laughs> hey, your message if you're Doug Peterson to okay. this football team. How important is that? You've been in them like this. Yeah. You know that kind of first one, and, and there's going to be a second one, right? There's a second one when you you hit training camp, and there's probably a third one when you hit the real, regular season. Yeah. But what's the tone setter? And, and how much thought goes in this? How meaningful is it? Uh, you, you're captivating a room full of kind of this new team. Yeah. So it means a lot. I mean, I, I distinctly remember. And it's funny because I can remember some of the opening. Yeah. Hey, guys, how you doing? Like, and some of them just kind of blank my memory a little bit. The one I really do remember is when I was with the Bears and um, Mark Tressman. Mark Tress- Mike Tressman? Mark, Mark Tressman. Yeah. yeah, Mark Tressman with was the head coach with a C. Exactly. And the first thing he does, we all come in, he, and he, uh, he has a picture of Grant Park. And Grant Park, you know, in obviously Chicago, a, yep. a Chicago famous um, actually park. where they had the draft. That's where they had, I know, like, the, they had, like, a record-setting, like, U.S., I think, men's national team watch party for the World Cup or something like that. I think you're right. For the women, whatever the case may be. But he showed Grant Park, and he's like, this is where we need to be. And then the next slide was, like, a big crowd at Grant Park. And he's like, this is what you guys need to visualize is that victory parade going through Grant Park. So, like, that's – how we started out the season. And I, I thought there, you know, there was some benefit to that now. You know, Martel Bell, Martellus Bennett body slams Kyle Fuller and then <laughs> gets suspended. And then, you know, Elson Jeffrey does some, his stuff. He has some great then, stories for a guy that wasn't then, with Chicago for and, too and, long. And, and, yeah, the locker room kind of <laughs> went, you know, and it was just kind of a nightmare in Chicago. I mean, how, long, how many days were you with Chicago? Oh, man. I mean,. Like two months or so, I yeah. think. Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of stories that have come out of your but, Chicago no, time. And I, I told you the story where I got cut, like the last cut of training camp. Yeah, and then I came back the last game of the season, and like there was so much optimism when I got cut. We're going to Grant Park. We got the team to finally do it. Jay's going to take us there. Yada yada yada. Defense is going to be fantastic, and like all this optimism. And then I come back. They re-sign me for the last game of the season, and it's like The Walking Dead. It's like. <laughs> It's like fallout. It's like, <laughs> man, what happened? You know? So anyways, 
I'm very curious, and we probably won't have the privilege to you know hearing what was said. But to me, if I'm Doug Peterson, there's one or two ways you can do this, and I think either way could be acceptable. Do you show the clips from the last game of the season? Do you show the Tennessee Titans essentially enforcing their will on you, getting out man, out gunned, not playing a physical brand of football? Do do you show that, and do you say, hey, never again? This should kind of let a fire in your guys' asses, or do you just go, we're past that, we're a new team. We're on to the next one. Expectations are here. And do you say, well, Houston is doing their thing now. No one's giving us a chance. I mean, there's different ways you could take it. If it was me personally, what I would do is I would show the Tennessee film. I would say, this is what we were last year. This is what people remember most about us. I would show that. I would show the Houston Texans in terms of all the hype, maybe some clips talking about the Houston Texans, going to win the division, crown them already. And then I would kind of focus on what do we need to do to take care of business. Yeah, it's interesting. I I, I like what you're saying. There. So you're okay with going backwards to that. Um, I, by the way, Doug, uh, Jaguars put out a couple minutes from Doug's, um, uh, you know, speech to them. And not everything, but obviously some of the highlights and some things that they were allowed to show. And uh, some of it was like there was a mention of, hey, you know, Kind of like we're better than that, and it's been a long time since the last game. And so it wasn't ignored completely, but it also quickly spun to, hey, we got a lot of winners in here, right? We got Super Bowl champs in here. We are, you guys are building this culture. Uh, it was positive stuff. Because the one thing in this town is you don't have to remind these guys of what just happened. They know. They heard. They hear. They, they've been listening for three months. It doesn't matter if they've been listening, listening. They've heard it. <laughs> that's, that's what happens in Jacksonville. That might not happen to every market. It happens in Jacksonville because this is what people talk about on a daily basis. So they've heard it in grocery stores. They've heard it uh, wherever they can he- possibly hear it. And so I don't think you have to pound it. And I also think they have brought other guys in, so you move it forward. It's not the same team. And how do you start building, building, building toward um, what you're trying to do? And and I think Doug probably did a very nice job of that. I think he's got a good feel for that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he's been there. He's been in your spot where you're listening to the coach talk about it. And he's obviously been the guy to deliver it before Super Bowls, after Super Bowl runs, um, you know, after Urban Meyer, uh, after miracle playoff runs, and now – after a collapse. So I think he's pretty well suited to do it. And um, I really don't even know if this one will resonate with the team as much as it will resonate when uh, the training camp starts to come around. True, yeah. You know, I think that's the one that really, okay, here's our guys. There are most of our guys. We know who's going to basically be here. We're going to have seven spots available out of those other 35 guys that are on the roster or whatever else. And um, let's go. It's go time. I, I don't think you can get these guys all there on April 15th. No, not at all. And who knows who's going to all show up and everything. But I do feel like you are bringing some fresh faces. Yeah. We'll see how the draft shakes out, too. Might some more fresh faces as well. So you have that many new guys coming through the building who are probably going to be counted on in some sort of role. I want chemistry already. I, 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 I want connections already. So by the time that you come to training camp in the summer, you're already ready to roll. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if that that is the case, and how many people stick around, how many people come. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, they, they don't announce that stuff anymore. No, they don't. And I, it's yeah. it's just, I mean, we know this. Josh Allen's going to poke his head in for a little bit, then he's going to leave. Yeah, and he's one of the leaders of the football team. I really think nowadays the only guy that really is important that he's definitely there is the quarterback. Sure, like I think you got to be there. So you're saying you don't want to see 100 uh, percent participation? <laughs> I don't care about 100 percent mandatory. Okay, I'm, I've never been a big part of this time of year. Like I, I get it. I think it's good to be there. I think a lot of any any th- kind of things you can check the box are okay. I just don't think it makes you win necessarily in the fall. Yeah, yeah if you yeah. check all those boxes, and I I just think there's more leeway. Do what you got to do to make sure you're ready. And to me, that's ownership. That's ownership of a locker room. It's like, yeah, that's fine if you're not here. They're voluntary. We're not going to make you be here, but make sure you're getting your work done. Are you going to come in in shape, right? Are you going to know the playbook? Mm -hmm. I think that's important for Josh Allen. Like he said it last week, know what my role is going to be on this defense. I mean, he just met the new defensive coordinator. So I think you want to get a feel for him. You want to be around meetings with him. You want to know what your job is going to be, how they're going to use you and Trayvon and other people, how they're going to accentuate your skill set. And I think he said that. So now I know what to go work on when I do leave in a few weeks and go to Arizona or wherever else uh, he's going to. So 
it's funny how quickly we've changed from that. I, and I yeah. know, obviously, Coughlin in 17 or 18, 19, whatever it was, I think 19, uh, said that in, in, I think, at the state of the franchise or a luncheon or whatever it was um, and kind of called out Jalen Ramsey and Telvin Smith. But overall, we have moved on from, I can't believe Josh Allen's not here. Or I can't oh, believe yeah, yeah. X no players not here. Like yeah. when it's training camp, it. when it's training camp, then it starts to be a little more of you know if it's like a contract holdout things like that. Then you know you can maybe start asking questions. But no, nobody really, nobody really cares about OTAs or off season workouts. What's pretty wild though is like we don't even have a lot of those anymore. Mm-hmm. Combination of like we don't. I felt like we used to get more drama into camp with draft picks and everybody else, and then we'd have the drama of right now of. Who's going OTAs? Who's not going OTAs? I feel like we don't have any of it. Yeah, any of it. Just from from your playing days as a defensive guy, do you remember like this time and how important it was for you? Now again, that changes from guy to guy. I'm not telling you you're the same as the next guy down no, the road. No, yeah, but I mean, I I do remember it, and honestly, it's not even like you come out there and like you bust your you know what right away, like. It's like a gradual process, yeah, yeah. you know, like, all right, you go out there, maybe get in some formations and everything, go through some plays, but it's very just, you're not, even, I mean, you're sharpening your tools, but it's more of just like a walkthrough format. Now, like there's OTAs, right, where that picks up and everything, and then that feels more like a practice, but it's it's almost like you're trying to prime the pump to get the engine ready for the season. Yeah, I, I, I sense that, um, and it kind of has a little first day of schoolish feel and kind of settle in that first week of school. Right. But for guys like you and a lot of these, if you're not going to like today, if you were still playing today, do you think you would go off to another facility or with this beautiful facility? Would you just stay here? And oh, no, what you got? I would probably just stay here and would utilize you? what I have. Yeah, because they have everything you need. Well, and that's part of it. I think that that was actually that's one of the motivations of when Urban pushed for this thing. Yep. Other coaches in the past have pushed for this thing. Yeah. Doug has actually commented about it. The nice part about this facility is you see guys hanging around a little bit more, right? That builds natural chemistry. Guys aren't trying to get out of here to go play pool or ping pong or video games. You can do it right here. You mm-hmm. can use the golf simulator when you're not you know, in the film room, but you can poke in the film room a little bit more. So I think you see guys hanging around the building. It's it's actually, you know, it's pretty wild about it to me. It's it's um, it's very reminiscent of the conversation that took place after the pandemic. Like, will we ever go back to work? Mm. And what some businesses have decided is no, it's cheaper. Yeah, so yeah, of yeah. The, but other businesses have decided people like that interaction. They like walking the halls and going to get a drink of water and running into somebody. And I think that's kind of the feel of what I see with this facility for the Jags. Like, And most NFL teams have it. Most collegiate teams have it. It's not just a Taj Mahal. I think it also might speak for team unity, chemistry, closeness, um, almost in a subconscious way that you don't have to force. Sure, no, without a doubt. And listen... I think the other thing that they need to be successful, and that's kind of the status quo now, like you have to have those things because you want guys in the building. But also, if it's me, I might go with Josh Allen to Arizona and see what he's doing over there because it seemed to be working out well for him. <laughs> that's a good point. And I, and I talked about this with Casey. I mean, if Sean Conn wants to fight the entire team yeah. on a little team bonding trip to Arizona and see what Josh Allen was doing, I'm not opposed to that either. Yeah, that's a pretty good call. Uh, I think some, Doug's, Doug needs uh, some dog in him. He's a little too nice. Do you sense that? Well, it's what we call kind of a player's coach, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I sense that he's not going to probably, like, chew you out. He's probably not going to – I mean, I don't, I don't see him, like, you know, I was, like, pushing him. But, you know, like, putting his hands on a player, not, like, in a violent way, but, you know, yeah, like, yeah. to try to wake him up a little bit. I don't see that. And that's the Andy Reid – Coaching tree. Now, I think Sean McDermott has a little bit of that. I think Sean McDermott's from the, the Andy Reid coaching tree. But most of those Andy Reid guys, they're more of, of a player's coach, and that's fine. But once again, if you're not going to be that guy, then you got to have guys in that locker room that are willing to do that. And this has been my opinion for, for the past, what, two, three months on the show. I'm not sure if they had enough of those guys in those high-caliber spots that were doing that. Yeah, I, I don't buy into the too nice stuff. But what I do find buy into is a little bit of what you just said is the mix. Do you have the locker room to handle that? Do you have the uh, locker room to have accountability for itself? Do you have ownership in the locker room? I think this was a major problem during Gus Bradley's tenure. Uh, he was 
perceived to be that. And then he also had guys in there that didn't know what the heck they were doing in the locker room, didn't know how to take ownership. Uh, maybe it was a character situation with some of them. They just didn't have the locker room. Yeah. Maybe it was never going to happen. I think this locker room feels different. So I, and, and actually, we're in a different time than even when Gus was here from 2013 to 16. I mean, now eight years later in the NFL, eight years later in society, eight years later in professional sports, it's different. Yeah. Like, I actually think Doug's the perfect kind of personality now for today's world. You mentioned it. Yeah. Andy Reid has won three out of the last five Super Bowls. Bill Belichick doesn't have a job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that is Mike Rabel. <laughs> and so, and, and I'm not saying Bill Belichick doesn't have a job because of his personality, but it is kind of interesting that he doesn't. And I, I just think you have to cater to the players a little bit more. But when you do have the ability to give them ownership, and that's where Trevor comes back in play. When you have a leader of the organization that people can believe in, I think from a player standpoint, and especially at that position, mm-hmm. I think that's a really important thing. See, the Jags have the ingredients to work and be successful. And the other thing I would say about Doug here is it's worked. I mean, he won a Super Bowl in 2017. Why would you ever change? Yeah, yeah why would you change? It's the same question we would ask him about play calling. Doug, why would you change? He won a Super Bowl. I, I mean, no, for sure, without a doubt, uh, I would never change. But at the same time, what got you there in 2017 maybe won't get you there now. That's I mean, fair. every team is different. Yeah. Every every team's personality, chemistry, every locker room is different. You know? And I think Doug Peterson's personality in Philly at that time – kind of put up to the underdog moniker a little bit, was exactly what that team needed. And I think, ironically, if you look at what this team is made up of now, and I think it's even a better roster than maybe Philly had in 2017 in terms of just talent, but if you look at kind of the storyline going into this one now, well, the Jaguars are not picked to win the division. I don't think anybody, including myself, is going to pick them to win the division. I think right now it's the Houston Texans hands down. And... When you have that chip on your shoulder, that underdog role, I think that's where Doug Peterson shines a little more. So I think they do have the recipe to have that Doug Peterson coaching style to kind of elevate their game a little bit and maybe achieve some expectations. Yeah, we'll see um, if it's a perfect scenario for the Jaguars. Uh, I really do think I'm I'm not wavering on Doug Peterson at all. I haven't. I think Doug's the perfect guy for Jacksonville right now and and hopefully in the future too uh, for the Jaguars. But it's a big year. We can't get around that. I mean, that's why we talk about it so much. It's a huge, huge year for the Jaguars coming up on so many uh, different levels. It's a huge week coming up too. We're nine days away from the NFL draft. Let's take a time out on the Brenton Austin Show. Shock Your Mock presented by Everbank is coming up in just a little bit. So we've got that. Some other topics, including star power. You know, Caitlin... Clark, Fanatics apparently sold more jerseys than anyone on draft night, like in the initial couple of hours. She eclipsed Trevor Lawrence, is the word. Huh. I mean, Amazing. the hype for Caitlin Clark doesn't seem like it's stopping. Did you see that scene in Indiana? Talk a little bit about that and how it does relate a little bit to Trevor Lawrence, what we have here in Jacksonville. Uh, still to come here on the Brenton Austin Show, and there is oh. number 16. Who's he with it? Do you know who's with it there? I, oh. I, I didn't see it. Mother right. is in the way. That is Looks Tank like Bigsby, though. Texting T. Higgins, whoever that guy was with him. I don't know. <laughs> He's like, hey, go and get What's, T. Well, I was wondering, was it Gabe Davis? I kind of just oh. thought a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it, probably was, it probably wasn't Gabe Davis, then. <laughs> we'll be yeah. back on the Action Sports Jacks 24 7 Network. What started out as Better People, Better Projects just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? These pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out. From residential to commercial uses, Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting betterexteriors.com or calling 904-902-4999. Better Exterior Solutions. Experience better. 
It's the place we party in football season with Jaguars All Access. Welcome to String Sports Brewery, everybody. Say hello to our guest tonight. That is Trevor Lawrence. You can bring your party or event to String Sports Brewery in Springfield any day and any time. Rehearsal dinners, corporate events, birthdays here at Strings. You can enjoy the inside area and the outside area. Good for any weather, good for any occasion. Watch the games, play the games, shoot some hoops, beer? Yeah, they have that. Plenty of choices. And sure, this is a brewery, but Strings is also a restaurant, and the food is fantastic. A full menu made from scratch meals. And if you need String Sports Brewery to help with a party at your place, they cater too. Family, beer, food, sports, Spring Sports Brewery in Springfield. I'm Action News Shacks First Alert Meteorologist Garrett Beaton. While the sun is up and it's going to be a beautiful day. Sometimes you just need a day to yourself. And Garrett's First Alert Forecast makes sure you're ready to go out and enjoy. Garrett and the Action News Jacks This Morning team helping you start your morning right. Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC 143-2579. Community. That's who we serve. It's the people. Yes, yeah, the people. Demanding answers because the truth matters. When are you going to do the job? Listening and getting help to those who need it. I just appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. It's about telling stories from deep inside our neighborhoods, informing you, building connections, tracking storms. Serious storm situation, the kind of which we rarely see. Holding people accountable. You were getting at the truth. That's who we are. Action News Jax. The friendliest golf course in town, the Golf Club at Southampton. Local golfers have no shortage of options when it comes to picking a course to play here in Northeast Florida year round. Yet time and time again, I find myself here at the Golf Club at Southampton. Easy to get to off 210 in St. Johns County. It's family owned and operated and renowned for being one of the area's most player friendly. That's just one of the reasons we hold the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18 charity golf tournament here each fall. The Mark McCumber design layout is great for all skill levels of golfers, from the guys who bomb it a mile on the range to golfers like me who are just happy to put it in the fairway, which Southampton has very accommodating fairways. And if you need new clubs, come down to the Pro Shop. They'll fit you up and get you a nice new set, like they did for me. For more information on membership or to book a tee time and see for yourself, head over to GolfSouthampton.com or call the clubhouse at 904-287-7529. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the official home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18. Make it your home for golf, too. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Hey, we welcome you back in here on a Tuesday. Brent Martin, Austin Lane, and Nick Petty with us here in the uh, producer director booth. The booth, the uh, Nick in the day. Nick, Nick in the day, man. Nick Studios. In the day. Nick in the oh, day or Nick at day? It's got to be Nick in the day, right? You can't say Nick yeah, at day. Yeah, Nick in the day studios. Nick in the day. Uh, <laughs> Kids Corner. Mm -hmm. Kim Corner. Kim Corner. 
I mean, we got a name for everybody in there. Absolutely. I mean, too many names. The drive through window. Hey. Uh, here in the... Uh, Everyone's part of the team, Brent. Got to give them nicknames. That's right. Action Sports Shacks 24-7 Network. And in our brand new studios, people love the studios, don't they? Yes. Uh, haven't played Pac-Man in a while, but everybody else seemingly uh, stops by have a game. You did yesterday. A little, you had a little time to kill. Play, I played for three minutes. Three minutes. That's I got it. killed, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm uh, done. You're done. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's it. It's all she wrote. All she wrote. Uh, you can find the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 network on actionnewsjacks.com and the Action News Jacks app. More programming coming your way uh, in the coming months, uh, but even in the coming days, like on Wednesdays, it will be Cup Date with Stuart Weber, a week with Action Sports Jacks uh, with Olivia Tassily. That's 1 and one thirty, and then 2 o'clock, no gate fees, presented by Nimnick Buick GMC. We will have that for you uh, tomorrow, talking high school baseball and softball. The rankings just came out, by the way, for the FHSAA, so uh, we have some uh, stuff to talk about tomorrow on the show, I am uh, thinking tomorrow's topic uh, will be a little twist of specialization. I continue to hear this uh, in the youth sports world from like doctors or high profile athletes or the messaging to, I think, parents and, and also um, kids is play as many sports as possible, play as many sports as possible. So, mm-hmm. uh, but I also thought, here's what I was thinking about a little bit. Why do I feel like that's aimed at boys more than girls? Like, I feel like that's a boys' topic. Play more as many sports as possible. Yeah, I don't know. Like, do you, when you think of that, don't you like? Do you think? No, I mean, I think of like, I mean, if I had like a daughter, like, yeah, let's get you in gymnastics, swimming, basketball, softball. Yeah. You know, like I, I don't, I don't necessarily reserve that just for for boys. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I mean. Well, listen. I never really I thought about it, though, honestly. I don't think you know? it should be reserved yeah, for just yeah. boys. I'm just thinking, like, hey, if somebody cheerleads, they usually cheerlead. Okay. Like, if, I mean, if you're volleyball, again, it might, maybe uh, maybe it's like an older way of thinking that is like the boys that were playing basketball, football, basketball, baseball. Sure. Right? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And obviously, from a girl's perspective, you're probably not playing football. Well, now you can play flag football. Yeah, but you got to remember too. A lot of the sports at the youth level are all catered to the spring, at least with the high school scene. Even as they add sports, okay, from beach volleyball to flag football to others that are added, and the reason they do that is to stay away from the football. Mm. And they don't want anything conflicting with football. They don't want if you're a cheerleader to conflict with football. They don't want band to conflict with football. They don't want football to conflict with football. Yeah, yeah, I got. So you. they don't add sports in the fall at the youth level because of that. Because um, quite frankly, that's like the money maker. Um, in athletic departments. So we'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow. Uh, any uh, youth sports topics are always on the horizon, so if you have any suggestions, let us know. Uh, we'll have some guests on the show, Committed to the Uncommitted, our High Five Power Polls. Those are all on the way. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock, no gate fees, presented by Nimnick Buick GMC. Uh, we continue to talk about the NFL and sports, but I've got a superstar report, um, I think, before we go there. Caitlin Clark, I mean, that was quite the scene. Yesterday, uh, she b- continues to bring attention, and she's not alone. It's actually a really good WNBA class in 2024. Yeah. Um, do you? I, I guess this is starting to answer some of our question of will the, she have staying power outside of Iowa and the NCAA tournament in March and what we just witnessed and saw and more viewers than the men's national championship game. Mm-hmm. I think the answer right now, at least for the time being, is yes, she's going to have staying power. Yeah, I mean, she's getting propped up on SNL. Obviously, a big talk of the draft last night. Um, the girl's everywhere, and she as she is should, everywhere. and and as she should be. You know, I mean, I think she's like the new Taylor Swift now. Like, you you go on the internet, Caitlin Clark's there. So, you know, is that going to correlate to to viewership going up the WNBA? You would think so. I mean, you talked about the jersey sales. She just had a record with that. So. All indications are saying that Indiana is going to be the. Pl- I'll say that again. All indications indicate that Indiana is going to be the place to be, in terms of uh, you know viewership and watching basketball, and, and they know what they're doing in the, the WNBA. I think I forgot how many games, but it's like only two of the games won't be televised or something like that from Caitlin Clark. Yeah, and by right. the way, uh, CBS and which you'll see it on CBS Forty Seven jumped on this. Yeah, and as they I, should. It, yeah, they've they've. Jumped on the WNBA band, like a probably a great, um, you know, forward thinking play. Yeah. By CBS to be like, hey, we're going to broadcast games and and get on this train and see what happens with it. 
Yeah. Uh, so they're doing that. Caitlin Clark, just if you missed it, uh, this was according to Darren Rovell and Fanatics, that she sold more jerseys, the most jerseys ever on a draft night um, in a two-hour span. She did this past Trevor Lawrence, which I didn't realize Trevor was number one back in 2021 yeah. on this kind of category. So, I mean, it just shows you can't get enough Caitlin Clark right now. You said it Saturday Night Live. Um, did you see the arena in Indianapolis? Yeah. That was absolutely packed and she wasn't there. Now, somebody on Twitter said this to me. He's like, well, did you see TIAA Bank, now Everbank, when Trevor got drafted? And yeah. he wasn't there. He wasn't at the draft. He was at home. And I was like, you know, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. I think we do forget, like, it was that kind of buzz around Trevor Lawrence coming to Jacksonville. Now, what's hard to kind of figure out there is we were inside a stadium. But I can, we went three hours live on TV around Trevor Lawrence being drafted. Yeah. And so it was a huge deal. But we were at a stadium. And so, yeah, they were, it was busy. People were on the field somewhere in the stands. But it's a 70,000-seat stadium. So you didn't have the feel like yesterday when you had like 18,000 people inside an arena. Yeah, And that yeah, place yeah. didn't look like it had a seat. Missing. For sure. But, but, I mean, it is that kind of excitement around Caitlin Clark, and and well, I, I think this is going to li- – I just wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was a March Madness thing. I wasn't sure if it was, like, the latest trend thing. I don't think this is going anywhere. No, I don't think so either. And I know they're trying to, like, the, the commissioner of the WNBA even came out and said they're trying to get new teams now. They're going to have one in some South yeah. Florida, some expansion going on, and one can say they're trying to ride that Caitlin Clark wave for all they can. Yeah, I, I I wonder now, like, there are a lot of people that say, hey, she's not going to be able to make as big an impact. There's going to be a little bit of learning curve. We have seen in the men's game, though, when you have stars, when you have Kobe, when you have LeBron, and you have, like, these kind of stars, they do make an impact right away. Mm-hmm. So I, I wonder if she's that star that can make an impact right away. On the way. Now, she, is she going to put 45 up a night? No, it's, I don't think it's going to be a role to do that. Yeah. Uh, she's going to have to acclimate to a team um, that's different than what she was doing. But... I don't really think she's going to have a problem acclimating. No. I think she's going to be successful. No, I mean, because well, number one, like, yeah, she's a great shooter. And that's not going to change. But also, she's a great facilitator. And now you have girls that can make three-point shots a little better. Now you have girls that can, you know, drive themselves and, and set her up. So, like, yeah, she'll be asked to do a lot still. But I think her skill set is going to correlate great to the next game because she's going to be playing with great players. All right, so then I uh, ask you this question. This is my father-in-law actually asked us this question the other day. So is LeBron still a top five player in the NBA? No. Not even close. No. Sorry, LeBron, but you're not. Where is he? I mean, off the top of my head, we're going Luka. We got to go Shy. Got to go Giannis. Embiid when he's healthy. Got to go Jalen Brunson. Got to go Tatum. Got to go Joker. I mean, yeah, a Joker. Um I'd probably put LeBron probably like top – I'd put him in the 10th or something. I know Brunson's been great, but you putting Brunson ahead of him? Yeah. Have you not been following what Jalen Brunson's been doing? I, I just said yeah, I know okay. Brunson's been okay. great. Because he's supposed but. to be – He's gonna. Be, I mean, is LeBron going to be a first-team All-Pro? Because Brunson should be. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think you make an argument that is AD better than LeBron right now. Is like LeBron the best player on his team. Yeah, maybe. Um, he's still. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I, w- I would just say the same thing. Like, I wasn't answering. Yes, he's a top five guy because yeah. I think you have so many stars now, and and obviously guys passing by. I just I think of. I don't know. I still want him on my squad. <laughs> right? No, like, I hear you. Like, and <laughs> no, I hear you. So you still want him on your squad, but the Lakers are. are might be in a playoff. I mean, they're they're they finished eighth, yeah. so they're all right. But like, the reason why the Knicks are the Knicks right now, and by the way, second place in the East, is because of Jalen Brunson, and like you have a yeah, guy like Anthony. Him, I yeah. mean, and you got a guy in Ant who, you know, once again, I mean, yes, the Timberwolves are a great team. They have other great players, but Ant's kind of the the the, the focus on that. So the NBA has a lot of great players right now. I probably missed a couple, but. Yeah, I I can't call LeBron top five, unfortunately. Yeah, and well, so it's a, I mean it's part of it. Um, were we calling uh, Tom Brady top five by the end of it? No, like uh, quarterbacks or player, like players in the NFL. Yeah, maybe both. 
Definitely not players in the NBA. I mean, definitely not NFL, players right? in the NFL. Um, top five quarterbacks, like when he went to the Super Bowl, you can make an argument, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that, like, I think numbers say something there, but the GOAT for a reason. Yeah, yeah. I just want to, I mean, he's GOAT for the longevity of it. Yeah. He's GOAT for the whole resume of it. He's not necessarily the GOAT for the last year of it or even yeah. the last two years of it. But, uh, yeah, a couple years removed from retirement, he won a Super Bowl. So mm-hmm. uh, that there's something to be said. doesn't look like LeBron's going to do that yeah. uh, with the Lakers. Uh, okay, so that lends me to this next question. I saw a graphic for the NBA playoffs, and I'm like, and I've said this for a long time. Mm-hmm. I, I've said two things about the NBA. I, th- I think if you average 15, 16 points a game, like there's a million guys that do it in the NBA. Um, what do you say? Grayson Allen's averaging like 13 and a half a game. He just got a $70 million contract. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Money's insane, by the way, in the NBA, uh, which is wild. But uh, to me, getting a guy scoring 13, 14, 15, 16 points in the NBA is like having a pitcher that can get an ERA of 4.50. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But I do think when I saw that graphic, I'm like, man, it's crazy how many stars there are in the game. Mm-hmm. Like there are just so many stars. And it got me thinking, is, are there more stars right now in the NFL, in the NBA, or even Major League Baseball? Where you have like a, a yeah. laundry list of guys from young to, you know, longtime veterans yeah. that are still stars in the game. I mean, with all due respect to Major League Baseball, you have to take them out of there because they, they're not competing in terms of star power, in terms of NBA and then NFL. No, they won't compete there. But I'm talking about as a league, do you have more like upper echelon start. This isn't necessarily an argument of who's bigger, Aaron Rodgers or LeBron James. No, I like hear you. Across like, the globe. I mean, I think a star, I think of a trending topic. Yeah, I, think of a, I think of kids talking about him on the playground, things of that nature. And if you're asking me which league has more stars, are we going NBA, are we going NFL? I mean, to me, NFL is obviously going to be king. They're generating the most money. But I think what hurts the NFL is the fact that Sometimes, like, just personality. But, like, the NBA, you see the player. Like, they don't hide behind pads and, 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 a, and, a, and a mask and everything. So, I lean towards the NBA. But also, I think from a cultural influential part, you could echo NFL a little more because kids doing the gritty. Kids, you know, I mean, that's, that's a good point. That's NBA. I mean, I'm sorry, that's NFL. But I think top to bottom stars, I would probably lean towards the NBA because it seems like now, like every team's probably got one. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's an interesting way to look at it. If you put, um, again, this would be a, a great, you'd want to talk about metrics, get PFF behind this or somebody behind this and put like this whole pie together on what makes like a star. Uh, because I think you just brought up something interesting that actually lends me to think more about baseball. Like bat flipping became cool and, and kind of the thing, like kids are doing that stuff. Like they're playing the game the way some of these guys are playing the game uh, with the influence of, of personality, you know? And obviously Otani's one of the biggest stars in sports, um, so Major League Baseball can claim that. The NFL is so United States-focused, yeah, right? So that changes their dynamic a little bit. Um, but again, I'm talking like if you're a commissioner of a league and you have like part of the health of your league is uh, parity is my guess, right? Mm-hmm. Um, avoiding, um, my guess is major disaster or issues or problems, right? That are dramatic talking points like uh, <laughs> the Toronto guy betting. Like you want to yeah, yeah. avoid that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in Otani's situation, <laughs> you want to avoid that stuff. So, like, if I'm a commissioner, I'm looking at it, but also it's important to have star power. Uh, the NBA has always embraced the star power, but their list goes, like, on and on now for me. Like you said, at least one, if not two, sometimes three on every team. I think in the NFL, I mean, you are not worried about your star power. Your quarterback is your star. There are plenty of good quarterbacks around the National Football League. If you don't want the quarterback, you've got the running back uh, with the Saquon Barkley. You've got uh, the wide receivers with the Tyree Kill and the Jamar Chases and sure. the Justin Jeffersons. Yeah, yeah. You even have defensive star. I mean, you've got stars all over the place, I think, in the NFL. Um, and again, I would say Major League Baseball feels really good about their young talent from Ellie De La Cruz all the way up to your, your older guys, like a judge or whoever else, mm-hmm. as long as they can stay healthy. One of the big problems Major League Baseball has is they can't keep some of their star pitchers healthy right now, mm-hmm. and that's why it's such a big topic. Yeah, and I think the, the benefit of the NBA is that young guys can come in right away and be world beaters. I don't want to say world beaters, but, but they can come in right away and be 
stars. Yeah. You know, like that's that the NFL can't do that as well, but like I don't think anybody's taken a sport by storm like in San Antonio with Yeah Wemby. Yeah, you know, that's a good and, point. um and then that's kinda I think the beauty of basketball is you can come in right away and make that much of a difference. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, NBA, just real quick. Um, obviously, Luca, Giannis, right? Uh, Jalen Brunson, you mentioned it. KD. You know, you know what? I forget. You forget about Kevin Durant right now. Yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of forget about him. And him and Devin Booker out there in Phoenix are obviously that Tatum, uh, Fox uh, in Sacramento. Easy to forget about Halliburton. Um, yeah, Halliburton, Steph Curry, uh, Joker. Mm-hmm. Um, heck, Anthony Edwards is he star? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. I mean, I mean, I know he's got the dunk of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but like, I mean, hey, the, the Timberwolves are fifty six and twenty six right now, and a lot of that is because of him. Yeah, twenty six points a game. Uh, because I'll give you another guy everybody forgotten about is Kyrie Irving. Yeah, well, he he plays a back seat to obviously Luca to Luca, mm-hmm. and, but he's averaging twenty five a game. I think mm-hmm. it is uh, if I've got this right. I'll give you a guy like uh, who's come into the league and actually performed really well to the point you're saying, but it doesn't feel like he's. Uh, captured the attention of the whole league, mm-hmm. but maybe that's just because I'm very casual NBA guy. Uh, Cade Cunningham, yeah, so like scoring 22, yeah. 23 a game for Detroit. Are they just Detroit? No, they're, they're, well, yeah. they're, they're, they're the worst team in the league. I know it. Yeah, but yeah, is that, yeah. that's probably why. Yes, yeah. um, but once again, Wemby. It's not like the, the Spurs are that good, but I think just Wemby just does it so differently. He does. Like, it. He, he's, you, you haven't seen a guy that plays like him. He's before, a unicorn, really. Yeah, um, yeah. He's thirty. By the way. Wemby is a true star, and on his way to start him, he's 30th in the NBA in scoring, mm-hmm. right, at 21-something at a game. Um, yeah, you can, I mean, look, Jimmy Butler's 35th in the league in scoring, and you can go all the way down to him. Oh, yeah, because once the playoffs start, who knows? <laughs> That's a different Once he goes to emo <laughs> mode time. and puts that hair down, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, so anyway, just uh, I think it's just fascinating to look. I, I saw an image of the NBA. I'm like, man, there's so much to pick from in these playoffs. And then your guy in hockey, which we don't talk about enough. There's probably not enough depth of star, though, in no, hockey, right? No. Fair well, enough. Yeah, because it's, it's not fouled as much. So, yeah. But do you – well, that's – but what I'm asking, like, um, it, as somebody who does follow it, are yes. there more stars than we think or know of? Because baseball had this so, issue for a long time, too. You follow baseball, you know a lot of stars. The problem was they don't transcend the sport, and guys that don't follow baseball don't know about them. I yeah, think hockey's yeah, yeah, got a yeah. little bit of that issue right now, too. Yeah. And you know very few names in the sport of hockey. Is that because where we put hockey in the landscape of our sports, or is it because, quite frankly, they don't have the depth of the other sports in terms of star power? So I'll say this. It always seems like with hockey, and this is why I think Connor McDavid like is – a crazy generational player because it seems like every single year, like, yeah, you have your McDavid's, you have your um, Markinens, you have your dry sidles, pasture marks, all those guys. But like every year, like in terms of points, because it's, it's a stat driven thing, right? So you have assists, you have goals, that's going to help you out. Well, Connor McDavid is always number one. Yeah. So like he's Just by far the clear assists, by the way. He, Fourth one all time, I think. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But then you have other guys that like, can kind of surprise you and some guys that kind of fall off a little bit so like in terms of consistency like the it's there but it's constantly fluctuating yeah you know like in the nba yeah nine times out of ten guess what luke is going to be at the top for probably scoring and so is Giannis, things like that and like yes comic david's up there but then like some players can kind of just creep up that you don't really see coming i was trying to think of this in the um you know throw the masters in and scotty scheffler has been a name everybody's been talking about and uh, I think I texted you guys or emailed you this. Scheffler, to me, it, right now he's the star of the sport mm-hmm. in, in golf. And he reminds me of uh, kind of like the Joker. Hmm. And, and it's unusual because most of the stars in sports over the years or even currently yeah. are dynamic by nature. Dynamic personality. Sure. Come with a polarization. Right? Yeah. Part of the reason Tiger was such a big time icon is not only because he did things nobody ever did and all the you know social influence and global influence but it's also because he's a polarizing guy like i love him my mom doesn't yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, (laughs) like like that's that's the nature of him and and we need that in sports like scotty scheffler is not polarizing joker is not polarizing but no hold on now give joker some credit because he caught the world by storm when he won a championship and said, I don't want to go to a victory parade. Like, Scheffler would never do that. Like, I think Joker 
is low key celebrated and like almost like praised because in the NBA where everyone's about the ego, everyone's about the look, the attitude, he's like the black sheep of it. And like people gravitate towards that. And even like, you know, so he says, I don't want to go to this parade. I want to go back home to Croatia with my horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that was that was the the vibe for a while. Like people love that. And then what happens? He goes to the parade and he says, This was a bleeping good time. I'm glad I went. You know, so yeah, yeah. I think in a world of me, 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 Joker's just like, man, I don't want to do any of this. And like yeah. that's what makes him so pol- I think he is polarizing. I think Scotty Scheffler just falls in the line of like, every other golfer. Yeah, but I think as many people know that parade story as as many people know that he went uh, last, you know, flew home that night and went to a dive bar in Dallas to celebrate the Masters, which you probably didn't know and other no. people didn't know, and that's kind of a cool thing, but people but, don't know it. Like, but what, and it took us three years of MVPs for Joker to get to that point where he talked about horses in a parade. Well, because he had to win a championship. I get it, but yeah. he was still a star of the sport. It was the MVP of two course. years in a row. Yeah. And nobody kind of could figure out why. I just think... Joker is different from Scotty Scheffler because I think Scotty Scheffler is the run of the mill vanilla golfer, and I think Joker is the exact opposite of what you expect from an NBA player. Yeah, I yeah, think he's yeah. the opposite. That's a good point. Like yeah. that's a good point. That's a really and and really you're saying this in a again that's a league that we just talked about has a ton of stars. Yeah, but they kind of look and feel and act a lot of times the same way. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And Joker is outside that mold. I think Joker and Giannis fall in that category. Yeah. And, and I think Giannis is celebrated as well because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that that is a, that's an interesting dynamic. Almost being the antithesis of the, the normal star has yeah. created. Uh, like I don't feel that polarization, but I guess when you're good, you start well, like, three years running. You know, then you start to get. A little polarization. I mean, he he definitely had polarization with like Kendrick Perkins and other NBA guys who thought that Embiid should have won the MVP or that year, yeah. and, and not him. And like, and once again, we can break down the playing style and all that stuff as well. But if you watch him, like, it isn't exciting. Like, I, he's not dunking. Okay, he's not like coming up with these athletic feats by any means. Because look at him waddle down the court. <laughs> but once again, that's what makes him, I think, so great is the fact that he has the ultimate IQ and yeah, like, yeah. and and he can facilitate. He can do everything a big man can do, and it's it's fun to watch. Yeah, you got to appreciate him. Uh, you know, I, I put Mike Trout in this category. By the way, we've said this for a mm-hmm. lot of years, talking about baseball and stars and everything else. I mean, Mike Trout. We we all believe over the last decade, we've been watching one of the greatest baseball players of all time, and nobody knows it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's it's a weird thing. He to me, he fits more the Scotty Scheffler. Um, you know. And uh, I would put him in Joker category in a way, but I like what you just said there. He trots more cookie cutter yeah. baseball guy. He just doesn't transcend because he he doesn't want to. Like he just likes to fade and and he's out there in L.A. So it, and they haven't been good. They haven't got on that stage yeah. to where they they win playoff games. But back to something I said real quick before we take a break. Dynamic of our stars. I mean, there's usually a dynamic there. Like these these guys are different. Like these guys that I just mentioned are different than our normal stars. Like, have we had that in the past? I mean, when we had Michael Jordan and um, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, I, I guess you could say Bird was a little bit like that in the NBA, but it still didn't feel that. They were doing commercials. Um, it was Magic and Bird all the way back since college. Then it was obviously Jordan on the scene. Um, in the NFL, I feel yeah. like we've always had dynamic nature with our stars. Maybe a little boring with Brady for a lot of his career. Uh, yeah. But then the polarization started to happen because they got so good. I mean, I think Marshawn Lynch can fall in that role of like he never really gave you a sound bite at a press conference, but like in doing that, it kind made of became him a, a character. But also his playing style as well helped yeah. him out there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of just the highlight, real nature of. Yeah, it. I mean, I think it just goes to show you where if you find yourself in the professional ranks and everyone's going right, go left and see what happens. That's kind of what I can't figure out exactly though to just put a full circle bow on this about Caitlin Clark. Okay. Why? Like she's not, I, I don't think dynamic in personality. No. Is she different than a basketball player? I mean. Her style. I mean, her playing ability is. the Well, her ability is. Yes. yes. Um, But does she have enough of the other ingredients to have staying power? Do we need other ingredients? And, and I guess the one ingredient she has attracted is polarization. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, right? Too much, all right, 
too much on my TV, too much <laughs> on my feed. Yeah. I'm done with the Caitlin Clark stuff. Like she's going to probably get that. So there'll be some natural built in, almost Tim Tebow esque. Yeah. Right? Polarization. Yeah. I mean, what it comes down to is this for me with Caitlin Clark. Like, does she have, you know, this all out, get out star potential personality? Not really, but I don't think she needs it. And I think that that's kind of the beauty of basketball is that you have the ball in your hand more than, you know, a wide receiver, more than a running back. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, Tyreek Hill, Justin, like Justin Jefferson is obviously a star, right? He's, he's a very polarizing individual. The dancing, the stats, the accolades, everything. Like the, the guy's got it all. He still needs someone to throw him the ball. If you don't have a quarterback to throw him the ball, if he can't get the ball in a game, it doesn't really matter. Caitlin Clark's going to have so much influence on her WNBA career because the ball's going to be in her hand. Like, she's coming to Indiana right away, and she's going to be the go-to person. All right, right on. So as long as she keeps on scoring, as long as we keep on seeing these highlights pulling up from 35, 40 feet out, she's going to be just fine. Like, I never thought, like, Steph Curry – Go. I mean, you probably can't find this anymore. This was big when – I was in, like, I think college still. There's a video of Steph Curry rapping um, over, I think it was Asher Roth had a song called I Love College. And Steph Curry did this song when he was in, he's in Dayton, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's the funniest thing ever. And I remember being in college laughing my no, ass off. Davidson. I'm sorry, Davidson. Dayton, Davidson, same thing. Whatever. And I remember being in college laughing my ass off watching it because, like, it was just, it was so cringy and so cheesy. And you, you probably can't even find that video anymore. With, with Steph Curry. And I look at that, and I look at him now, and I'm like, I mean, does Steph Curry, like, does he have the fashion sense? Well, I mean, whatever. You know, like, does he have the 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 good quotes and everything? Let's start, like, I mean, yeah, but like, I don't get, like, a Kobe, a Kobe Bryant mentality. I don't get a yeah, mama yeah. mentality from yeah. him. But guess what? The guy shoots lights up. All right? And then the guy does something we haven't really seen before from a shooter. So, yeah, man, you're going to be a bona fide star because your ability allows you to be. I feel like Caitlin Clark's going to be the exact same thing. Yeah, maybe she needs a mouthpiece. Get her a mouthpiece. There you go. <laughs> I like that. There we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. Uh, half hour on star power. Yeah, it was inter- it's been an interesting dynamic over these last couple of weeks, I think, uh, uh, with all the different sports combining. And now we're getting into the postseason, by the way, NBA, NHL. These stars are on display yeah. more than maybe you're used to seeing here in Jacksonville or more than you're locked in. But I think you're going to see more of them, much like we did with the NCAA tournament and some of the stars there on the men's and women's side. Uh, back to some football conversation. There's some mock drafts out. I could see if you like what uh, some folks have the Jaguars doing. And, uh, hey, take a look at uh, 1 to 1 Financial Ballpark. It's baseball grounds, Reagan Field, it's the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp with their education day. We've got a lot of elementary schools on hand. 11 o'clock in the morning game. Uh, bright and early BP on a beautiful day in Jacksonville, Florida. In Northeast Florida, we love hanging out on the back patio, maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family, enjoying the good weather, or maybe enjoying the big game on the TV. Or maybe your favorite team in town, the Action Sports Jacks team. This is great, except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out. But what if you didn't have to worry about that? Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot, any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. Navigating to that perfect car can be a daunting task. Trust me, I understand. But if you want to find the perfect blend of sales and service for your automotive needs, look no further than the Tom Bush family of dealerships. Here at Tom Bush, they do things right. Dating back to 1970, they've been a staple in the community giving back and keeping everything local. With four different brands to choose from, BMW, Mazda, Volkswagen, and Mini, there's a car for every member of the family, and the customer service is second to none. 
Looking to add an electric vehicle to your fleet, Tom Bush remains at the forefront of new technology with plenty of staff on hand to walk you through the future of driving and help eligible customers file for that EV tax credit. Whether you're looking for your future driver's first car or you want to step up to luxury and arrive in style, the Tom Bush Family Dealership is the only stop that you need to make. Stop by the showroom or check out the inventory at TomBush.com. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. It might look quiet, but that's just a chance to admire the facilities on the campus of the University of North Florida Ospreys. The stretch run has arrived in college sports, and for the Ospreys, that means the end of the beach volleyball season coming soon. And critical series for UNF softball and on the baseball diamond for the Ospreys team. Tennis is trying to peak in time for April's A-Sun tourney as well. The postseason in golf is on the horizon, and track and field has its busiest stretch of the season. For news, schedules, and results, just go to UNFOspreys.com. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked, stained, or just plain ugly? Spartan Coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous, easy to clean, antibacterial, and slip resistant, all with superior durability. Living in Florida nearly my whole life, I know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor. That's why I had Matt and the crew from Spartan Coatings transform this space. And the best part, they did it in one day. It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings dot com today for your free quote everyone loves a good game night here you don't have to be the host you don't have to clean up they bring the food and drinks to you and you can watch whatever you want on the big screens it's more than a card room it's a night full of fun with friends best bet jacksonville orange park and now the newest location here in st augustine right off 95 at exit 311 a brand new clean room a full bar and menu my favorite sushi in town and i love the fries too you don't have to just play poker at best bet that's why i come over here to the table games and play one card poker that's a pretty good card and a win one card poker is like war as a kid you against the dealer and this isn't the only fun table game to play a friendly staff, a lot of fun, it's a good night out at Best Bet Jacksonville Orange Park in the newest location in St. Augustine. You can be a serious player or a novice, it doesn't matter. If winning equals fun, you're a winner every time at Best Bet. I'll save you a seat and I'll see you down here at Best Bet St. Augustine. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Another live look. We got a lefty on the bump for the uh, Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp this morning. Yes, this is live baseball in Jacksonville. It's a big day down there at the Sports Complex. We'll get some baseball at 11 o'clock in the morning for the kids on a beautiful day here in Northeast Florida. And then uh, right across the way at the new Miller Electric Center, Trevor Lawrence and Foyer Lewican will uh, jump in front of a podium. Well, not well, actually behind a podium. Hey, there you go, Marceau. And uh, they will uh, talk to the media. So we have that going on uh, today. Baseball and football. And it'll be interesting to hear from Trevor Lawrence. We talked a lot about Trevor in the first uh, hour of the show. And uh, maybe talk a little bit more about him coming up here in just a bit. I just got this in on email from uh, an odds standpoint. And uh, these things change all the time. But I know you're always interested in these odds Let's go. around the draft. The Jaguars, where do you think they have uh, as the top position? Jacksonville Jaguars' first drafted position. First drafted position. Well, I think we... Best odds. Yeah, best odds. Well, obviously, we've been big proponents. I think everyone knows what's up. Um, Trevor knows what's up. The city knows what's up. Wide receiver. So with that being said, go ahead and give me cornerback. (laughs) 
Dallas. Go ahead and show me cornerback <laughs> Alex for 500. That was well done by you. Yeah. And so well done that you're right. Do I do I know this team or do I know this team? I mean, it's Austin. It's minus two hundred one to two oh! odds. <laughs> I don't. I don't like that. If you're saying like minus like one fifty, minus one thirty, almost to pick them, if you will. Yeah, I can come with you. We're talking two to one odds, Brent. I don't like that. One to two odds to pick corner. Is wide receiver second? Yes, so two me. to one. Ooh. That's not bad. Mm, a little juicy. So a little juicy a little right little there. juicy. Yeah, I got you back might in the game. To, to Reeled to you docks back in. a little bit. Might have to go cash some checks and go to the docks and uh, talk to Tony. <laughs> you, know, you know you know, Tony at the docks? Uh, yes. Yeah, tell him, <laughs> tell him Austin sent you. Uh, one to two odds to pick corner. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Everybody's saying this since the combine. Maybe I'm missing something. I just can't get. I don't think like this is not a buy. Listen, I I think they're fine at wide receiver. If they had to go play a game today, I want them to pick receiver for all the reasons we've talked about for two months. Not yeah. going to reiterate all that stuff. I think it makes the most sense to pick wide receiver. I also, I, I just I wish there was a cornerback that I was in love with. Now the odds makers might be saying, hey. The reason, Brent, they're going to take corner is because those top three receivers are going to be off the board and they're not going to get a deal done, and so they're not going to take Brian Thomas at 17 and reach for him there. Yeah. I can come around to that logic. But even then, I could make the case that pass rush is more important right now than corner. Um, well, and I know people love corners in this defense with Nielsen. I get it. He's a new D.C. You want to take care of him too. Like, so, I mean, I'm not telling you I can't see it. Mm-hmm. I'm just having a hard time marrying that with what's out there with the guy that I think is going to be a difference maker for the Jaguars in September. I mean, do they take into account, like, theoretically, let's talk about this. If the Jaguars don't trade, what's the most likely scenario? Like, if the Jaguars don't trade up or trade back, they can't find a partner, whatever the case may be, and we don't want to see them really trade back, I would say. I want to see them trade up, mm-hmm. but... If they were to trade, what's the outcome then? Like, I think, and once again, I, I like Brian Thomas Jr. I think he could be an option. Maybe he's not going to be there. We, we don't know what's going to happen with Brian. He's kind of a wild card. He is a little bit of a wild card. He's all over the board. But, like, you can't fathom, like, AD or Leggett going no. 17. No, no. So if they don't trade, he's there. Or you take your second well, best the, corner. The, That's what corner. I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, I mean, if, if they don't trade up, theoretically, what's going to, you know, yeah, I mean, what's there? Yeah. You could see him actually trading back to go get that guy. Yeah, yeah. Now, exactly. because look where it's behind him, though, is Kansas City. Kansas City, go grab wide receiver. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll take that all day. Okay, so they take the next best guy. Las Vegas, they're always could draft wide receiver, although it's not really high on their list. The Chargers, they're behind them. They could draft wide receiver if they didn't already in the top 10, which a lot of people think they're going to take offensive, offensive line yeah. in the top 10. The Rams, I doubt they're going to take wide receiver. Uh, the Dolphins, I doubt they'll take wide receiver, but they actually have 5-1 to one odds to do it. But again, like you, it's, this isn't going to be a dr- – if you want receiver – you're not going to play it like you did with Anton Harrison, where you're like, hey, we got this guy. We can trade back a couple spots. We know they're not going to take him. If you're trying to get back to 24 or whatever else, like eh, you're going to lose your guy, so you better like another guy mm. because somebody else is going to take wide receiver before you pick at 24, let's say. Let's go the opposite way here, though, and look at the teams they could trade up with in the top 10. And Atlanta is the dance partner that – Seems to make sense to a lot of people. Remember, they did some work with Calvin Ridley, so they've done business before. Um, they are picking number eight. And I think what's interesting here, the Falcons, while they could take wide receiver, hmm. defensive edge, defensive line, four to seven odds, which is minus 175, and cornerback, two to one odds to take. I think a lot of people believe they're going to take corner in Atlanta. Okay. Or they'd like to take corner. Well, you're not going to take a top 10 corner. You can come back to 17 and take one or two, three different corners that you like most likely. Okay. So they are a trade partner, in my opinion, that makes a lot of sense if you can get the capital right. Now, they might make sense for other teams, too, to trade with them, not just the Jacksonville Jaguars. So now, real quick, though, where um, they're picking what number again? They pick eight. Pick eight. 
Okay, and then the Bears have nine. Bears have nine. Okay. But the, the Bears, here's the thing about the Bears. They're, if they have one of those receivers left on the board, aren't they going to go after him and get no, that, more no, weapons? No, that's what Caleb I'm saying. Williams? I was making sure that they, they can get ahead of the Bears. Because okay. I think yeah. like, uh, Udunze is probably going to go to the Bears. Yeah. So listen, there's four. Number four is Arizona. They're not trading out. They need help. They're going to get the. They're going to get Marvin Harrison. Well, they also want a like. King's ransom for that spot, which they're is not that what's get been reported? Yeah, 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 a lot. Well, who's picking five? I'd have to look it up. Uh, I gotta look it up. But six, um, I think it's the Chargers. Oh, maybe Chargers are five. Uh, who's six? The Giants have been receiver looking. I think. They, yeah. They, they they neighbors has been a guy that they absolutely or, love. Do you go QB there? Daniel Jones, a little more pressure on you? We'll see. Yeah. Seven is Tennessee. You're not trading with them. Yeah. So, like, I don't see – it doesn't look like Arizona's going to trade out. The Chargers actually could trade out. They could be a dance partner, in my opinion. Uh, the Giants, I think, need too many good players. They need some blockbuster guys. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to stay. I think Tennessee ain't trading with Jacksonville. <laughs> Like, that has not happened. Yeah. Like, that just won't ha- I mean, it does make sense that it happens. Uh, so Atlanta becomes the most likely. I think, actually, the Chargers are in Atlanta, the most likely picks to be traded um, based on whatever compensation. Now, Atlanta makes sense because you've done business, but they also don't need wide receivers. So And, and there are corners later on that you can drop back to. So yeah. I think if they don't trade with Atlanta, I'm not sure they're trading with anybody outside of a little more desperation and a little more you have to give up to go get – Chargers. But the Chargers probably want some blockbuster players next to their quarterback that they've spent a ton of money on, too. Yeah. So, I mean, here's the other part of it. By the sixth pick, the top three guys could be off the board at receiver. Mm-hmm. I mean, is it out of the question that Arizona, the Chargers, and the Giants all take wide receiver? Or the Titans as well. Or the Titans by step. Oh, I mean... Do you think the Titans will? No, the, well, I think but, Titans are taking offensive line. Okay, because I've seen some mocks saying that they might get like if if neighbor one of those guys drops, then they might take them. Uh, let's see what Tennessee just from an odd standpoint. Not that this is gospel, but Tennessee. Uh, I'm treating it like offensive gospel. line one to four odds minus four hundred. Okay, what's second? And then wide receiver. Wide receiver. Uh, okay. Seven to two. So those are, would be the two ways that they go. Again, they got and, an offensive coach. Makes a lot of sense. Well, plus you got Joe Alt, who's like unequivocally the best. Offensive lineman in this draft. So as you talk about this out loud, you can make the sense of why they're saying corner. I think it's going to be hard for the Jags to trade. Yeah. And and there's two things. I think it's easier to trade with Atlanta. Just how likely is it that a guy, one of those three guys, is there when Atlanta picks? Mm-hmm. It'd be fascinating to watch it play out. I mean that. I, I saw something else from. Um, Schefter today, he said 19, I think it's the record is 19 offensive players taken in the first round. They think they're going to blow that away. What does that say? Does that say more about the league, that everybody's going offense, or does it say more about the talent coming out? I mean, I think it's a combination of both. Obviously, we're talking about wide receivers. Even the second round could come in and contribute right away at a high level. But it also shows that, yes, it's an offensive-driven league. I find it interesting that – I, I mean, I get the offensive-driven league stuff. I just find it interesting that maybe this is just a marriage of what the talent is versus, yes, the offense, people want to score, load up for their young quarterbacks, conversations we've had many times. Mm-hmm. But the reason, or big part of the reason, that a team like the Chiefs won the Super Bowl is because of their defense. They really upgraded on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, San Francisco's defense has been good and loaded with names, and they go to the Super Bowl. I mean, some of the teams that have made it the last couple of years or go deep runs in the playoffs, their defense is no slouch. Now, you can argue that their offense helps their defense, um, but this is going to be a draft that mimics what we've basically been saying for months. It's an arms race in the NFL to uh, go get offensive weapons. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to happen. Real quick, what were the odds of the, the last pieces for the Jaguars in terms of who they taking the first? So it, it went corner, oh, wide receiver, uh, then. Uh, let me just double check here. Uh, the ranking, I just passed it. Uh, corner, one to two. Mm-hmm. Wide receiver, two to one. This is another one that I was sketchy on. Offensive lineman, seven to one. is third. Hmm. Pass rusher, nine to one. I would flip-flop those two. Yeah. Now, that might say more about the depth of the draft as well. 
where the odds are coming in. And then it's like safety's 30 to 1, linebacker's 50 to 1, tight end's 50 to 1, running back's 150 to 1, and quarterback is 200 to 1, <laughs> which would make some sense. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's the highest odds they go is 200 to 1 gotcha. on, um, on any of these guys. Uh, Peter Schrager uh, did a, an NFL uh, mock draft. Who doesn't do a mock draft? Here's another storyline that I found interesting. And did I miss this? Jaden Daniels, has he passed Drake May? Because er- I see him number some, two everywhere. Some people say he has, yeah. Th- is that like a new thing? Um, Not necessarily. I just so think funny, I'm not paying attention to quarterback. Yeah, no, because you don't have to, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I've heard like draft you know, pundits speak about this a couple months ago, saying how, you know, obviously the running capability and – Kind of more to, to like a modern NFL offense that you could benefit from. Well, and, and the proof of what, like, I don't know how you don't look at what Jaden Daniels did and kind of compare it a little bit to what um, Joe Burrow did, sure. you know, at LSU. And so that had success rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the production, obviously, so much there. He, he must have interviewed well and done well. I just feel like this was, all right, is Jaden Daniels even going to go to the New England Patriots? Yeah, and now it's yeah. like, oh, no, no, don't worry about that. He's going to Washington. Mm-hmm. Like, where did that come from? Um, and it's, it's obvious, uh, it's not just like Schrager here. Like everybody has it. Everybody where I've seen it has him now. Number two, I think I, I was listening to, uh, Mel Kuyper the other day. It, it feels like that's where he's gone. And I don't know when that flipped. I missed it. I missed when that flipped, um, in the quarterback, uh, world. All right. Uh, Schrager, by the way, has, uh, Quinion, Quinion Mitchell, uh, going to the Jags. He says this, at number 17, Jags are thrilled to nab a cornerback with everything you want at the position. Size, speed, playmaking ability, and irrational confidence. Okay. I like that. I like that, too. I love Mitchell saying he's the greatest football player ever to come out of the MAC. Jack Lambert, Randy Moss, Ben Roethlisberger, watch out. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) Good little note. Yeah. Um, This is a guy that had a lot of attention early on. I feel like he faded and and, um, Arnold started to take – you know, and then other guys. Like, again, this is my problem with the cornerback position for the Jags. I don't really know, like, what, who's the guy. Mm. So you got to find the guy. Yeah. And how much confidence is it the Jags are going to find the guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. with is the second one they pick the guy? Are they settling? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when, when Schrager says something like that, I think like Jalen Ramsey with all the swagger and everything sure. else, like. And he's, uh, I think, a ball hawking guy up there in uh, Toledo, too. A couple other uh, mock drafts just to give you an update on. I know everybody loves these things. Brian Thomas, uh, Kuiper picked him. They, they did this combination with uh, Field Yates and Mel Kuiper uh, going back and forth for three rounds. Oh, nice little collaboration. Yeah, and Brian Thomas uh, was the pick for Kuiper at 17 for the Jags. Um, he passes up, uh, and, and again, I think we went over his mock the other day, pass up on guys like Jared Verse. Uh, Xavier Worthy, Cooper DeGene. Actually, I think in his own mock draft, he had Cooper DeGene in that 17 pick when we did that on Friday. So in this one, you get the receivers. Uh, at number two pick, uh, which is number 48 overall, uh, Marshawn Neeland out of Western Michigan. Okay. He's an edge player. Says, while Jacksonville signed Josh Allen to deserve a long-term deal and Trayvon Walker broke out last season, his team must continue to hammer the edge depth. I think Neyland's blend of raw power and quickness would be very appealing to Trent Baalke. Uh Field Yates made that selection. Let's go one more. At number 96, um, this is an interesting read here. Uh, that's a compensatory pick that the Jags got, and Yates is picking for him. Christian Jones, tackle out of Texas. And he says, this is a bit of a look-ahead pick for Jacksonville. We can get another offensive tackle in the pipeline. Jones has a ton of experience and has played both left and right tackle. Okay. So that's in a third round, end of the third round, look-ahead pick, which is interesting because I had a comment yesterday on Twitter from Gigantor in Jax, and he asked me the question about the offensive line. And basically saying, are we looking into it enough? Here's what he said. Is the consensus that the Jacks have significantly improved offensive line? Other than Anton, can we realistically count on anyone else being a starter one to two years from now? We were terrible in the run game. Trevor had a little time in the pocket last season. And it's an interesting point and a good point. But where, like, Field Yates picks the kid out of Texas Mm -hmm. in late third round, I can get that. Because now you are looking ahead a little bit to one to two years down the road. And probably just one year down the road. Yeah. You can't do that at number 17 and 48. 
Like, you just can't take offensive line at 17 and 48 unless you're willing to make a move and put this guy in. Are, are you willing to say, okay, trade, goodbye, see you, Cam Robinson? You have to be willing to do, do something. Right. Yeah. If, if you're going to justify a first, second round pick, they got to come in and produce right away. Yeah. So I think, I think the, that alone says that they can't take offensive line in the first two rounds. Yeah. You just can't do it because there's nowhere to play them. Like, they are, they are solid. Whether you like it or not, they are invested in their offensive line for this year, don't you think? For 2024? Yes. I mean, I they've kind of made their bet. Mm-hmm. I mean, they re signed Ezra Cleveland, they add Mitch Morse, they restructure Sheriff, and they've got Anton Harrison. The only move to make is actually where you have two guys that can play the spot and Cam Robinson and Walker Little. Yes. That's the only move to make. So for everybody who wants offensive line, like, I get it. You can't have enough of them. But I don't think you start finding them for down the road until at the earliest that third round, probably more like the fourth round. Correct. Uh, would I'm make uh, the most sense. I'm definitely with you on that. So I don't know if we figured anything out other than that. We know we, we, want, really wide, well, we want wide receiver, but they really might not be there is what I'm talking myself into. <sighs> Which also makes the idea to push and show that maybe the Ayuk or something like that becomes more... If you really want wide receiver, that's the route you have to go to get him. If you get a Brandon Ayuk or T. Higgins, this going down on draft day. Say that again. If you're going to get a Brandon Ayuk or a T. Higgins, is that deal going down on draft day? Um, or can it possibly happen a little before? I would think a deal for those guys, uh, Ayuk specifically, I think makes the most sense given the most recent reports over the weekend uh, about Higgins. I think. Uh, I think it would happen before. Okay. Yeah, because the reason why I say that, awesome, like even Monday or Tuesday or heck by now, part of the reason I say it is because I think if you're San Francisco and you're getting, say, the 17th pick for them mm-hmm. or the 48th, whatever it is, if you're getting the compensation, you now want to strategize like who you want. Mm-hmm. Now, could you get the emotional play on draft night because a guy's available and you think he's going to be available and be like, hey, all right, our guy's available. Let's do it. Like yeah. th- these talks would have probably already had to be preliminary. Whereas I- I'm thinking, like you have Lynch and Bulky, and they're sitting there talking, like, "Hey, if the scenario presents itself, would you be willing to do this? Are we willing to do this? Yeah, but only if it it presents itself. Okay. Like we got to see if a guy's there at 17. Um, we don't really care. Or we don't need it. But if a guy is there, we'll we'll, well maybe do it. And see, that's kind of the thing, though. That's why I feel like. It could, if it's going to happen, it might happen on draft night, right? Depending how the draft falls and everything, depending what, you know, teams are interested in. Like, maybe a player falls to the Bengals that they're like, hey, we can maybe give up Tegan to get somebody else. So, like, I, I think if it was going to happen, I think they, they let kind of the draft shake out first, a la A.J. Brown and the Tennessee Titans. I um well that's a good point that's a, there's some uh, history in that I, I like this by Duval Jags he's still he's probably mad because he, he got beat out yesterday in the shocking walk well but, you sent ten of them sorry man um but he said but I like this because he's a good listener okay he said Brent you said the same thing last season and we drafted Anton mm. Brent hates offensive line in first round crying emoji I don't laughing crying emoji I don't necessarily hate offensive line but you are right I did say the same I couldn't believe they picked Anton Harrison. I couldn't believe they picked a guy that had never played right tackle to play right tackle. And oddly enough, it worked. Yeah. And it looks like it worked. So, hat tip to them. But you're right. I didn't see a place for him to play last year. Now, there is a scenario here where the left tackle can play, but you better shed some guys. Mm -hmm. Is what I just said. I mean, you have two players that do have flexibility. Cam who has cap flexibility. I don't know if you need any more of it. You're second in the league right now in cap space. Yeah. But he has cap flexibility. And Walker Little might have some trade value as a player if you're not going to invest in him or play him. So yeah, I, that's where left tackle would come into play. But I think as it sits right now, I just said it. You've got two players currently on the roster that you feel like can play the position really pretty well. Mm-hmm. Why in the world would you invest in offensive line right now? Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I think you can make an argument and say Walker Little can also play guard, right? Well, we we, we saw it for like 60 snaps. I don't yeah. know if he can okay. play guard. I don't know if any of us have that answer. Okay. 
Um, and I think they got to stop messing around them. So I guess to your point, Duval Jags, like if you want to make a move, if you tell me that somebody else is gone, like if you make the move, cut, trade, whatever, which they're not cutting now, but if you right, trade yeah. one of those guys, then, yeah, I think that opens the door for offensive tackle. Um not only for right now, but also for down the road. And now you have bookend tackles that are young if you want to go about it that way. But I also ask one more question. If you get a rookie left tackle, is that doing good by Trevor Lawrence? Now you have two tackles that are like less than two years into their NFL career. Is that taking care of your quarterback? I mean, if they're good, it is. Yeah. If like, they're good. Well, you know what you got in camp. That's what the draft is, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you here. You know where I stand on this. I don't think you're doing Trevor Lawrence favors by getting the offensive tackle because it's going to take some time, and where do you put him? I'm with you. I think there's other needs that need to be addressed first before offensive line, which is kind of ironic because what was the biggest thing we said all about last year? Well, offensive line, offensive line. I just think that whether it's wide receiver, here's the thing. All right, let me ask you this. What's more of a need right now, offensive line or corner? Uh, corner. Explain. Like, why, why do you say corner? Because uh, I think there's, I would say because there's less investment in proven stuff there. Okay. In depth. I think de- offensive line checks all those boxes. Okay. You're pot committed on dollars, draft capital, and you actually have depth on the offensive line. Guys that can back up other players. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think you have enough of that on corner spot. Sure. And I, I agree with you. So the only question about corner is the one we've been asking for a long time. Is that guy going to beat out Tyson Campbell or Ronald Darby? At, well, at, okay. In the first round. He's going to – he has to. He has to. That's yeah, what I'm that's, he's, he has to. Like, if, if you bring in a corner in the first round and he's not starting, then you failed. Yeah. But if you ask offensive line, you don't have to necessarily beat out Cam Robinson. You make a move that gets Cam Robinson off your roster. Well, you could essentially make a move with Tyson Campbell if you really had to. That's a good to. point, too. That's a good point. Not saying I'm asking to trade Tyson Campbell. That's actually but. yeah, and we did that. Who who could be a trade scenario? That's uh, we shouldn't forget about that one because that's actually a decent call. You could move him. Why would you want? I mean, don't you have to see some more? Or are you just trying to sell low? I mean, I don't know. I, I just feel like I'm not sure what number one we get for Tyson Campbell right now. You know, like you're not going to get a yeah. high draft pick. I feel like yeah, no, you won't after no, last won't. season. No. No. Yeah, you don't really have a lot of leverage in the Tyson Unless game. Ryan Nielsen sees him and says, you know what, he's just not going to fit our system fit. because we know how yeah. Ryan Nielsen feels about a certain type of cornerback. But what do you have already moved? You know, that's another thing. True. Or is he a draft day move guy? Like, I don't, I don't see that. It doesn't feel that way. But I guess it could be. All right, let's take a break. Uh, noon hour uh, coming around, and we've got Shock Your Mock presented by Everbank. It is on the way when we come back. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Alive and well. Make sure you check it out on ActionNewsJacks.com and the Action News Jacks app, the Brent and Austin Show. We take a live look with Marcel Robinson. He's at the Shrimp Game. And in the next 45 minutes or so, he'll wander across there to the Miller Electric Center uh, for Trevor Lawrence at the podium. I'm trying to make my way there as well in the next hour. We'll be right back. I like to say everybody has a story, and sometimes we are a part of other people's stories. That's the case here at Nimbic Buick GMC. My family and the Nimbic family, we've purchased six different vehicles from Nimbic Buick GMC. Maybe you're in the market for a truck. Well, let me tell you about the GMC Sierra. I absolutely love mine. I've had a couple of these. This one's a 2020, but right now on 2024 GMC Sierras here at Nimbic Buick GMC, there's special financing. A year ago, we purchased a GMC Terrain for the kids. Financing rates as low as 0.9% for eligible buyers on terrains and no payments for 90 days. Looking for used instead of new? Buy a used car with the Car Bravo program. Nimnik Buick GMC certifies all makes and models. Let the number one Buick GMC dealer in Jacksonville take care of you and your family. Come on out and see the showroom. Meet the fantastic people. Or shop online at NimnikBuickGMC.com. Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. GMC, we are professional grade. What started out as better people, better projects, just keeps getting, well, better. That's Better Exterior Solutions, ready to help you create a better outdoor experience. Check this out. Motorized pergolas are the latest in technology to transform your outdoor space. Beautiful day? Let the sun shine through. Summer rainstorm? 
These pergola systems close automatically to keep the weather out from residential to commercial uses. Better Exterior Solutions has products customized to meet virtually any existing architectural structure. With retractable awnings, screens, and hurricane shutters too, if you want unparalleled quality and expertise, you need Better Exterior Solutions. Get a free estimate by visiting betterexteriors.com or calling 904-902-4999. Better Exterior Solutions, experience better. It's the fishing tournament everyone wants to get in, and it's time for you to register. More than 650 boats entered last summer in the Daily's Old School Kingfish Shootout presented by Yellowfin. Mark the calendar now, June 8th. This is fun for the entire family, and everyone has a chance to win big. Limited boundaries, no bait buying, no checkout. Cash prizes for the top 25 places, cash prizes for the top 10 lady anglers, and prizes for the top 15 junior anglers. The grand prize, this Yellowfin Bay boat with a 200 horsepower Yamaha and a Maritrail trailer. The value, over $100,000. It's the Daily's Old School Kingfish Shootout. Early entry until the end of May is open and $250. If you don't catch the big one, don't worry. Just catch any size kingfish and have a chance to win $10,000 with the Nimnik Lucky Ticket. OldSchoolKingfish.com. Register early until May 31st at OldSchoolKingfish.com. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. Streaming right now on Action News Jax. Let's get your morning started. It's local. Take a look at this surprising video. It's breaking. It's weather 24-7. I gotta keep you guys safe. It's original. More trucks, more food. It's entertaining. Google. Now it's new and free. Cause no one can do it like we do it, like we do it, like we do it. Everywhere, anytime. Stream Action News Jax wherever you watch. Discover how good your water can be with a new Kinetico softener and drinking water system. Kinetico's twin tank non-electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available, and their drinking water systems remove up to 99% of contaminants. We know that at our home. You can find out as well. Right now, you can save $1,000 or more when you bundle the Kinetico Premier softener with a Kinetico K5 drinking water system. The experts at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing will test your water for free and determine your water score. Don't know your water score? Well, CGC will find out and recommend the appropriate Kinetico water treatment solutions to improve it. The higher your water score, the better your water. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. That's 904-552-1242, cgcwater.com. Financing options are available with approved credit. CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, an authorized independent Kinetico dealer. Florida license number CFC. One four three two five seven nine. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks twenty four seven network. Well, there we go. What do we got? We got a shrimp with the lead, one to nothing. As uh, Marcel Robinson continues to give us a peek at Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp playing eleven o'clock in the morning. Nice when they do this. Uh, a lot of times they'll have Wednesday early games, but this one's on a Tuesday, and uh, a lot of the kids out there. Education Day at uh, One to One Financial Ballpark, Bragan Field, and there you can see some of the kids uh, from the area catching a ball game. Always a good place to do it, right there at uh, Bragan Field. Baseball season underway. Brent Martin, along with Austin Lane and Nick Petty, he's with us in the producer booth, the director booth. Do we have a new song for Shock Your Mock? Yeah, Brent, you know how it works. The studio is always open, right? I'm always working on stuff in my beat laboratory, and today was no different. I uh, put it in the AI, getting my $5 worth, if you will. And today, since we had such a great job on the, on the first kid's song, this is going to be under, by my understanding, I haven't heard, I haven't heard the song yet. It's always a surprise for oh, us. Oh, you haven't heard it? No, no, no one hears it. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a worldwide release for everybody. 
Um, I put, though, I told the AI, make it a kid's song again. And I gave it some words. And what we're about to hear is the result of that. All right. Uh, well, with no further hesitation, we hear it. Shock same mom. beat, uh, apparently. Presented by Everbank. The same beat from the last song. Do better. In a land called Duvel, so bright and so grand, a football ref came to cheer up the land. With picks on the chart, oh so sharp and so smart. Young Jags in the draft, ready to make their mark. Brent and Dustin okay. with their mark okay. on the black. <laughs> Big dreams in their eyes, tick tock, tick tock. Oh, they shuffle measure. the names, so fresh and so new. Hopes riding high for the teal and the blue. Shock ah, on, they say with a smile, building the future for the two foul mile. The fans they mile, cheer, everybody. the city's alive. Jack's draft is here, together we thrive. <sighs> that was a little disappointing. Is the yeah, I mean, mile like the green mile? I mean, what do we do? What do we got here? I don't. I don't know, man. Now I know how Chance the Rapper feels after you released that one album, and then it kind of <laughs> <laughs> went downhill from there. Um, yeah, whatever. I didn't really do it for me. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, you know, can't hit a home run on all of them. Well, but, come on, like, them pretty good. How come in the one that we had, where you can understand it clearly, and this one, it's like we're we're going to the blue and quarter mile. What? Yeah, teal and blue. How did that get in there? I don't know, Brent. Sorry, everybody. How many words did you enter into the AI? I put in Brent and Austin, Shock Your Mock, Duval, and Jags Draft. Huh. Yeah. And they got teal and blue out of that. I mean, teal is kind of blue, right? It's bluish. But you wonder, like, did AI kind of search teal and black and, and miss? Well, hey, I swear if AI rhymes TikTok with Shock Your Mock one more time, I'm going to lose my <laughs> mind and ask for a refund. So how does that sound? <laughs> Uh, should we ask Tick- for a re- <laughs> TikTok has been featured. The lyrics TikTok have been in every one of these songs. Yeah, that is interesting. Do better AI. That's because well, you your mock and clock. And clock. There's there's other words that rhyme with and, mock. And you know why? Because AI is finding draft countdown, right? Yeah. Right now? Sure, I got Yeah, you know I, I mean? think, Yeah, I guess so. This is even better. We got to uh, investigate why they're picking these certain phrases in AI. <laughs> But right now, they're getting count out of the draft. Count out of the draft. Count I should just ask AI who, who the Jags are going to draft. Or you're on the clock. On yeah, the clock, true. right? That's what true. they're going to see. On the clock. That's, that's a good point. That's actually a good one. What's who that? Who will the Jags draft? I'll have that to you tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, in a PowerPoint presentation. All right, All right Brent. Well, we go. speaking of a PowerPoint presentation, Brent. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, let me go ahead and find this guy's name quick because this guy gets to have all the credit for this mock draft. Um, who? Who? Um, yeah, just, we'll, we'll get there, man. Don't worry. Uh, so this one is going to be from Stuff Miami. Stuff Miami. How many Miami guys? Stuff oh, here Miami. We go. Three of them. By the way, he had uh, his – pr- like, go ahead. How did you let this in? Hey, he, he was in line. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes when you're the bouncer, you don't look at like, do you let all the pretty women in? Do you let some of the guys in? I just – I'm an equal opportunity bouncer. So everybody gets in. And Stuff Miami got in. And by the way, his uh, Twitter profile picture, spoiler alert, is a lot of Miami Hurricane players. So here's what to expect from that. This is like an all ACC kind of looking uh, draft here. Well, it's like an all Miami looking uh, well, draft here. All, all Miami as well, yeah. Okay, so uh, there were some trades that went down. What these trades were, we may never know. That's a red dot. And, and we traded down, by the way, as well, Brent. And we mm-hmm. know how we feel about trading down. Not the best. So not off to a good start, but hey, let's let's break it down anyways. Trevor Lawrence gets some help, or does he? Uh, pick number 31, <laughs> Devontae Walker out of North Carolina, 6'1 one and a half, 193, 33 and one force arms, ran a 4.36, a 40 and a half inch vertical, 11 2 broad jump. Athleticism score was sixth out of wide receivers, according to Next Gen Stats. Brent Martineau, your first initial thoughts. Who is he in? Okay, yep. <laughs> so this guy went to Kent State for a couple years, and he transferred this past year. NFL comparison is none other than Alec Pierce. Hmm. See him twice a year, you know? He went to North Carolina Central, then Kent State. Yeah, but he didn't play at North Carolina Central, I no, believe, because... Yeah. Well, so then why even say it, you know? 
I just say. Okay, I got you. Cancel the year. Uh, which means he's an old guy. So this guy is a long strider who excels in the long routes, go routes, post corners. Could okay. be a Gabe Davis clone. Okay. Um, is a lot easier to cover in the shorter routes. Booming build, and he has the up speed to gobble up the cushion. <laughs> Pac Man. <laughs> Yeah, Pac Man special. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking more like the Cookie Monster in the cookies, <laughs> yeah, but they're like yards. But no, I, I like Pac Man too. Um, Brent, fun fact about this guy though: his touchdown receptions they average thirty point seven yards. Okay, so big play hitter here uh, in Devontae Walker. Um, scouts have said though he has disjointed and sloppy footwork getting in and out of his breaks. Hmm. Disjointed. Welcome, Trevor Lawrence. Well, Trevor Lawrence welcomes you, Devontae Walk. Devontae Walker, pick number thirty-one overall. Uh, pick hey, well, num- that's different now. I haven't seen that. Yeah, probably for good reason. Uh, pick- well, one one thing, real quick. Mm-hmm. If you do trade back into this kind of way or trade up from forty-eight, these kind of guys come into the equation. Mm-hmm. That's why we just haven't spent a lot of time on Correct. those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but probably between twenty-six and say forty. Yeah. You're going to get a whole new crop of receivers that haven't been discussed yeah, as much. He, he can be there at 48. We'll see. Uh, Cameron Kitchens, safety out of Miami, 5'11", 203, 31-inch uh, vertical, 9 and 3 fours hands, if that really does anything for you. Um, I'm sorry. He had 31 and 1 fourths reach, 35-inch vertical, 9-2 on the broad jump. NFL comparison is the great Juwan Thornhill. Hmm. Heard of him? Where are we getting these comps from? I, this NFL.com, man. Lance Zerline. Uh, so Brent, initial thoughts before I break this guy down. Uh, I feel like I just saw something about Kinchins. Uh, Is he in trouble? No, no, like in a good way. Okay. Um, yep, I think the, he did yep. really well, like uh, Senior service. Bowl and okay. stuff like that. So Okay. So uh, about this guy, he has good instincts, ball skills, but lacks the speed. Um, but his lack of speed could turn off teams. Ran a 4.65. That is, a you know. From a safety, gotta get in that four, 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 five range. Um, I'm sure right now Al Davis is in heaven going, Mm-mm. Uh, nope. He's in- Mm-mm. No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, by the way, they, do me. the Jags need a safety at 48? Mm-mm. I don't think so. I mean, don't they have one? Uh, maybe he thinks he can play this corner, guy. Hey, but no. Hey, if the best free safety in the draft, which some people say, comes at number 48, yeah. No thanks. Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now, you, you you aren't winning today, but we're still gonna break it down anyways. But this is you're off to a really bad start. Okay, I mean, like I don't, I don't want to call it quits already. You know, like stop the count and everything. But time to stop the count. It's time Keyshawn, to stop the count right Keyshawn now. Keyshawn agrees. This is a Gene Smith mock draft. If I've ever whoa, seen whoa, one. whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. Um, Brent, he had mental lapses. Scouts praise him for his toughness and intelligence. But what does that mean if he had mental lapses? So make up your minds. Um, guy can make plays, but also he takes a lot of risks. So there you go. Then we're going back to back Miami. Calls Pitbull. <laughs> Dale. Um, we're going Leonard Taylor. Uh, defensive tackle. 6'3", 303 pounds. 33 and 7 eighths inch arms. That's going to be a Trent Bulky special. It yes. is. Ran a 5'1", 30 inch vertical. 9'1", on the broad jump. Brent, initial thoughts. Defensive tackle. Uh, small hands. Mm. At nine inches. Mm. And... Um, I'd rather have Lawrence Taylor than Leonard Taylor. Hit him with it. All right. I don't think um, anyone bench presses anymore because I couldn't find this guy's bench press. If that uh, makes you care about anything. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like he did sc- it. Scouts say he's a feast or famine type of guy, which means that Joe Collin wrote this out because Joe Collin said feast or famine at least 25 times per day <laughs> when I played for him. He, Brent, he was a highly touted player out of high school, but he disappointed in his time at Miami. Kind of always seems to be the narrative of him. <laughs> The Miami Hurricanes. True hurricane fashion. I mean, no, I'm sorry. You didn't reach expectations. <laughs> didn't do what we thought you were going to do. You don't say. Um, sorry, Hurricane. Yeah. Fans. If you watch his tape, and this is me saying it, um, I didn't see any. Like, I saw some highlights, but also some bad plays are breaking down. Imagine Bitcoin, like the chart of the Bitcoin the past three years. That's what you're getting with him. Yeah, it seems like it. It's a roller coaster. Very inconsistent. Don't know what you're getting. Yeah. yeah. You can cash out at a high place. Could be, you There's know. Some fun moments, some dangerous could ones. Could be still. taking the kids' college fund <laughs> out for, you know, because you got to pay some bills. Um, next pick, let's go to TCU now. Pick number 91. I think we've had him before. Brandon Coleman, 6'4", 313, 34, and 5 eighths inch arms. Whoa. Trent Bulky, blue light special, salivating. Got them 
hungry eyes. Brent, your thoughts? Uh, I don't mind guard play here. Like, again, I, I like this category. This is probably his best pick so far. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's guard 91. Play. Congratulations. Yeah. Big fella, uh, maybe a road grader. Yeah. Uh, and long. And yeah, this, this is an impressive guy. Former uh, offensive tackle moved to guard. Take that for how you want, but also means he's probably got better footwork than most. So, yeah, I think you like that pick uh, Pick number 91 for Brandon Also Coleman. an interesting path, too. He went Trinity Valley Community College, redshirted, then was there for a year as a top 50 JC recruit, mm-hmm. um, and then obviously moved on to the Big 12. Brent, people go to Juco all the time. I don't just say. Okay, I got you. Uh, pick number 96, we're going back to Miami. For the third pick, uh, because that team was so dominant this past season. Michigan, I can see it. You know, maybe Alabama, why not? Uh, let's go to Miami. Um, so we're going with James Williams at pick number 96, 6'4, 231, uh, 33 and 5 8 inch arms. I mean, those Miami boys got some long arms, Brent. Ran a 4'65, 30 inch vertical, 9'9 nine, nine on the broad jump, was a top 15 recruit out of high school. Brent, your thoughts? Why are we getting another safety from Miami? Well, yeah. Hang on. We'll we'll break that down in a second. Any other thoughts? That's it. Okay. <laughs> so the thing with this guy is is that they think he might be playing linebacker at the next level, possibly. Um, scouts Great. say it's fun, linebacker. It's fun watching him uh, run and strike as a high safety, but he expresses coverage confusion at times. Might need a year to add weight to be a big box safety or possibly even a nickel linebacker. He is a special teams ace, though. Hmm. Pick that for how you want. Uh, pick number 114, all ACC, all the time. Call us the ACC Network. Jeremiah Trotter, <laughs> six feet, 228 pounds. Uh, finished second, actually, in the production score of a linebacker in this draft class. Ran a 4-6 and is considered, if not the best coverage linebacker in the entire NFL draft. Brent, your thoughts? Yeah, he's a good one. Uh, and Again, I just don't understand what you're doing with him. You know, when you take linebacker at this stage, like they took Ventro Miller last year, and obviously he got hurt, he was going to be a special teams guy. Yeah. Uh, and you just inked Foye Lewican, and you have Devin Lloyd, and you have Chad Muma, and you have Ventro Miller. Like, where's the space for yeah. a linebacker? Like, I, I get competition, but this better be one hell of a steal if you're picking linebacker in this draft and you're the Jacksonville Jaguars. Correct. Um, let's just keep on going. Trente Jones. Trente? Trente Jones, I think we'll call him. Brent, right. 6'4", 33 inch arms. Trent Bulky Blue Light Special, 305. Um, in terms of production metrics, didn't really do his thing there. Um, not a lot of like analysis that you can really tell. Like Below average size and length of a guard, which is kind of crazy because I just said, I mean, the guy's 6'4", and he's got 33 inch arms, so I don't know. Once again, man, that's scouts. You don't know what they're saying sometimes. <laughs> he has overreaction to a lot of rush moves, is vulnerable as um, a pass rushing spe- like blocker, um, uses Chris sudden hands with his pass punch, smooth climber on work, explodes his hips, hands at first contact. Obviously a depth play here. Not going to come and make a difference right away. And then the last pick of this atrocity is another ACC guy, and we're going pick 212. We're going Miles Murphy. Let's go ahead and just run out is that, that Byron's ACC. brother? Might be Byron's <laughs> brother, man. I'm not going to lie. I was so just turned off by this mock. I didn't even look up to see who Miles Murphy was. I'll be honest with you. Because I'm like, this guy's not going to win. Like, it's not going to come down to Miles Murphy. What does Miles Murphy have? I don't. Is this the guy that has page two? Does he have a page two in this draft, or is this just page? Is this one page? No, this is the second page right here, I think. Oh, that is the second. Well, no, I'm sorry. There is another page. Yeah, go to the next second page. I didn't get the second page. Just go to the second page quick. There's there's more. Because. <laughs> I thought he had oh, Frank. Then he had Frank Gore Jr. Maybe not. Okay, whatever. Maybe that's the, case. the other one. Okay, whatever. Ooh, spoilers. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hey, we should draft Frank Gore's. That, that son. it just has an appreciation. Yes. That'd be some Forget good juju. about Bronny. That'd be some good juju. <laughs> Listen, that, now would be the time if he had like a kid at home that wanted to do a mock draft. Just send it in quick, because he'd probably go on in the next round. <laughs> yeah. But nevertheless. We have another submission that will break down. Spoiler alert, this guy probably this is there the last they are. Frank Gore back to back running back. His best pick is Frank Gore Jr. We'll take him. Oh! By the and way, by the way <laughs> he traded with Miami. I didn't even like break down what the trade looked like. I bet he helped the Dolphins out more than us. He probably he probably front loaded this damn draft to screw the Jaguars over so his Dolphins could get like all the best picks. He might have just scammed. Oh the, I'm a uh, sucker, Brad. I'm sorry. Mark. 
what do they call it? Call it being a patsy, right? When, when you get taken for a ride. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah, I'm a patsy might, in this one. Might have just happened. Before we uh, hit uh, the next uh, shock your mock, uh, yeah. can we maybe I entice you for some lunch at Donato's Pizza? Donato's.com, the place to go. Two locations, Mandarin and Jack's Beach. And uh, well, if you haven't tried Donato's, you got to check it out. I know you probably have. Fantastic pepperoni pizza. It's my favorite. I'm always a sucker for pepperoni pizza, but Donato's does it right from Columbus, Ohio, all the way down to Jacksonville now. And you can save this lunch hour and also all day, every day with the code BRENT20. 20% off your order if you give them the code BRENT20, B-R-E-N-T-20 at Donato's Pizza. Go to Donato's.com, two locations, Jack's Beach, and in Mandarin. Well, are we going to the second one right away? Let's do it. All right, because much like his Miami Dolphins, he didn't. He ain't making it out of the first round. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well done. Thank you. Now to uh, number two. The winner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we should break this down. We just go to commercial and come back and talk about some more hockey. Now, here's a trade I'm up for right here with oh, the Chicago man. Bears. That's now, what, I mean. Does it? <laughs> well, I mean, if you can pull it off, pull uh, it off. I'm going to talk us into this you, one. Okay, but you think, okay, I want you to talk about how the Chicago Bears had neighbors at their doorstep they decided to trade. Yeah. Okay. I like how you included neighbors at their doorstep. Very yeah. good. Uh, you know, I said, that, that was pretty all right. good. All right. So Malik <laughs> Neighbors, six feet, 200 pounds. Brent, your initial thoughts. Don't. I mean, I think we know where we're going here. You know, listen, I, I would say this. I, I think a lot of people love Neighbors as the best guy in the draft. I still would rank them, in my opinion, Harrison, Adunze, and then Neighbors. But I think there's a varying opinion and pretty much group think that they're all good. Yeah. So – if you can pull this off, whether it's at eight, nine, however you draft it, want to do it. Um, and, and I will say this about Chicago. They've been a wheeler and dealer in the draft stuff. So maybe they will continue to wheel and deal. And they did get help at wide receiver. Yeah. Maybe if they're left with neighbors and they don't think neighbors is as good as everybody else, doesn't mean they're going to take them. I mean, everybody's True. draft boards are different. Yep. So I, I wouldn't think Chicago's out of the realm, but I think it's more than likely they probably would just continue to add to the puzzle of Caleb Williams – um, if they're able to do it. But, hey, they could also – this is going to be a high offensive draft, right? Correct. They could find the best defensive player in the draft at number nine and do something like Houston did last year where you have Caleb Williams and you go get a high defensive oh. player and you could end up with offensive rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year. Keep singing, Brent. I like your tune right now. So, I, I mean, like, it. like, listen, there are a lot of ways to go for Chicago is the point because they, they do have D.J. Moore. They did bring in Keenan Allen. So they've got stuff. That's that's going to be the, the, the new song for Shock Your Mock tomorrow is Brent Martineau explaining why they're not going to take Malik Neighbors and actually get a defensive player and trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's the best song of all time. Listen, i got to make this guy a winner. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know we're, we're trying here, sir. Oh, by the way, so I say this, I'll say who it's from at the end. Uh, Malik Neighbors, six feet tall, 200 pounds. NFL comparison is Justin Jefferson. Is that pretty good? or? I think that's pretty good. All right. Glides and burns past defenders. Brent pushes them into retreat. <laughs> Whatever that means. AFC personnel executive says Jamar Chase was more of a dude physically, and Justin Jefferson was already skilled when he came out, but you see flashes of both in Malik Neighbors. <laughs> That's a nice combo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll be honest. The, uh, in terms of weaknesses, you didn't really see a lot. I'm drooling. Yeah, like, I, I think, like, <laughs> and I remember, I didn't read everything, but I think, like, one scout said, like, his shoes weren't matching for a game or something like that. Like, that's, yeah, that's what we're, we're trying to, you know. Poking holes. P -p -p kind of grab at straws here, basically. Um, next pick, pick number 48, Brent Max Melton, guy we've had a lot on the show, 5'11", 187. This R is where you should take a corner, at number 48. Yep. You, what are your thoughts on Max Melton? I mean, we've had this guy before. Yeah, like, yeah, listen, I'm okay with that. I still think this size is an interesting deal with this cornerback class. Yeah. We continue to talk about the weight. The weight number is interesting. At least this guy's up toward one. You can. He's going to be a 190 player, is my guess. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think that's just something to watch. And I don't know. That may be a question this week, actually, we asked for the draft launch. And why are these guys so light at the corner spot? Is that is that just the way it's going? Is is that more of a trend in the NFL anyway? And I just haven't noticed it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the guys in this draft class seem to be a little bit lighter in the pants. Scouts, <laughs> Scouts say that he is a better zone guy because when he's searching for clues to jump in and make plays, there's nobody better. <laughs> Jenkies, get him some Scooby snacks. We've been over this before. And let's watch him go to work. Um he comes in, he'll be competing for a starting spot. That's the, probably the best you can say right now. Yeah, but yeah. if a guy is said to be better at zone, I'm not telling you he's a turnoff, but it doesn't seem like a, a perfect fit yeah. in this Ryan Nielsen defense. 
But maybe they think he has athletic because the guy is an athletic freak, you know. Well, and I and, and I maybe caution, you can turn him into that. But. I caution to put somebody in a box because True. my guess, my my thinking is they can play both. Now is one well, better in zone? Careful or man, with the box, but Brent. Not because we, you, you know, Taven Bryan wasn't in a box. Dante Fowler wasn't in a box. Kevin Allen Chase wasn't in a box. Josh Allen wasn't in a box, and you know, sometimes put him back in a box. I think sometimes. Though, sometimes we, they're we worth say, more when you put him back in the box, Brent. <laughs> Don't play with him. Uh, put him back in the box. I do think we get to a point where we're like, oh no, he's a zone guy. No, I hear oh, you. No, he's a man guy. No, oh, no, no I get it. I mean, come on, I got to be able to play both. Now you do have strengths and weaknesses, and you got to figure that out. Brent, to, to to uphold that value, you keep him in the box. You don't go out and play with him. Uh oh, <laughs> pick one hundred eight <laughs> fan favorite of the show. We got Zach Zinter, six foot six, three hundred nine pounds, thirty three and one half inch arms. The Trent Bulky Blue Light Special NFL comparison is Brent. I forget. Glasgow I'm, or Glasgow, one of those Glass two from now, Detroit. Yeah. I'm, I'm still what, stuck. Yeah. I was wanting to tell Nick uh, that you can watch on Netflix Zach Zinter <laughs> and the big splinter. <laughs> Hard nose throwback, <laughs> but you know the story. All right, Brent, this guy sounds like he's from a Disney movie, right? <clears throat> High school senior Zach Zinter at the top ace of a fighter pilot school until night on until one night when his Nintendo Switch and a family curse changes his life forever. Now Zach is gonna realize that life isn't always as clear as 2020 vision. It's Zach Zinter in the Big Squinter coming to Disney this spring. <laughs> the Big Squinter, I like. It's it. always a family I curse. Think I like the Big Squinter better. It, uh, <laughs> That's good. Now, this wasn't the guy that had clear clear eyes, is he? <laughs> no, no, Cause no. Because that wouldn't work. No, no, I don't think so. I had an offensive lineman yesterday that had clear, clear eyes. Clear eyes, man. Clear eyes. So, yeah. So, check out Zach Zinter and the Big Squinter. Um, that'll, be a, that'll be a fire show from Disney. Um, next pick. Brett, <clears throat> go ahead. Justin Abogby. Okay. I was going to say, like, Ebo e- Jeep. Yep. Justin Abogby. Yep. What what Brent said, Justin. What, Justin, what Brent said. Uh, 6'4", 297, 33 and three eighths inch arms, five one eight forty, twenty eight inch vertical. E. Brent, your thoughts. Twenty eight inch vertical. I mean, you gotta hit that thirty, you know. <laughs> you gotta gotta get in that thirty. I mean, as a defense, first story I'm doing on this guy is we're having a jumping contest. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Brent, your thoughts. I don't mind deep tackle here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we like the Alabama guys too. So um, yeah, I mean that's it's fine. Yeah. So six four two ninety seven scouts are calling him a tweener with solid power but below average snap explosiveness and quickness. Um, one scout said he's more of a hard hat player than actually a difference maker. Keep in mind though, new stadium being built could use that hard hat. Could help out it, you know, behind the scenes a little bit. Construct some things with that hard hat mentality. New stadium, pick one hundred eight. Yeah. Not mad at it. Uh, not mad at it either. I like your usage of him over the next handful of years. I'm sorry, pick, pick 116. 116. By the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. the, you know, by, by the way, when you're 116, you're not looking for necessarily a star. You might be looking for a hard hat guy. Correct. So, like, that part is okay. Yeah, yeah. At, yeah. at this uh, portion of the draft. All right, Brent, uh, next pick. We got to get the new slide up here. My man, we are going with pick 129. Now, if we're going to grab a safety, we're going to get him from Georgia, not Miami. I like that, Brent. Thoroughbreds over there in Georgia. Dogs, if you will. Brent, are we saying Tiki or Tiki? I think Tiki. For real? Ah, oh, man, that changed my whole. Okay. I'll go Tiki. Well, I was going to say tiki, tiki because then when he gets burnt, you, you can call him a Tiki torch, and I don't <laughs> want to have that in Jacksonville. But if his name's Tiki, I can't do anything with that. Tiki no, Smith. Tiki Smith. All right. Well, nevertheless, he's 5'10, 202, 31 and 5 eighth inch arms. Trip Bucky Blue special. Um, if he gets burnt for a big play, you can call him, yeah, Tiki <laughs> torch, but you, no, never mind. Marcel tiki says torch. it's really Ty Lee Smith. Tyke. No, he says Tyke. He, he, he had a text. Okay. Uh, All right. Had a, had um, a text. <laughs> ran a 4 4 6, 38 inch, inch vert, 10 on the broad. Uh, played the star position, though. And this is kind of yeah. interesting about George's defense. I know. Right? Yep. Um, tiki Smith. Or Tyke Smith. Um, <laughs> the cool thing about this, so he can play a. They ask him basically, hey, you're an athlete, you're a stud, you're a dog, we're going to put you wherever. Now, keep in mind, does that translate to the NFL in terms of playing in multiple positions and then kind of finding your niche in the NFL? Possibly, but I think with a Ryan Nielsen type of defense where look at what they're going to ask Savage to do, right? Savage kind of sounds like what you know Smith has done at Georgia. So at pick 129, 
I mean, did we really address – did we address Edge? I guess we addressed Edge a little bit, but that's more to build the stadium. <laughs> So oh, that was a defensive tackle. Oh, defensive. Well, he's a tweener, you yeah, know, a tweener. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was helping build the stadium. I, I would rather see. I mean, uh, but well, I don't know. Like, listen, friend. you're at this point of the draft. You're taking best available. You can, you can get better at safety and your okay. depth and stuff. So yeah, no, I I don't hate it. Okay, gotcha. Probably, and if he's playing that star position, that means there's position versatility in him. True, most okay. likely. Okay, yeah, and and that's. Special, special teams, too. Bring them in right away. Could probably make a difference there as well. All right, pick 153. Anias? That was good. I'm not asking you a question. I'm just I'm, I'm saying it's Anias, right? <laughs> you are saying it. <laughs> that, that, that wasn't a question. Anias. That was a statement. Anias? Yeah. So Anias Smith. Very well done by you. Thank you very much. Wide receiver, Texas A&M, 59190. I thought this was a misprint. I don't think it is. Eight and a half inch hands. 29 inch arms. <laughs> I don't want to say anything I shouldn't say. No, come on, man. No, no. What do you got? Uh, like, what, do you, what do you got? That is not, um, this isn't what I was going to say, but that's Trent Bulky. He's got him like off the board like a red flag. <laughs> yeah. Like this guy might be the best character guy in the world and he's red flag. No, no, for sure. Um, I, uh, an AFC regional scout said, I thought he would start looking more like himself later in the season. So I think you will see a full on Smith by the 2024 um, in terms of physicality. Um, what, what did he look like? I like, wonder what he looked like. Like a ventriloquist dump? Tyrannosaurus like, how, Rex. I mean, <laughs> okay, that was, yours is not better than mine was. And that was a lot more mean because at least like a ventriloquist dummy, like they're. <laughs> They're put together. T Rex got those short arms, man. Like you're, you're being mean, Brent. All right, here we go. Weaknesses appear to miss his second gear in 2023. We're, we're recovering from a fractured leg suffered in 2022. Blue light special. Trent Bulky blue light special. Um, he has fast feet, but average separation on under, underneath routes. Um, Strengths has a double tap foot quickness. Double <laughs> tap. Um, elusive, uh, elusive, slippery, and strong all accurately described his run after catch. Could provide an early special teams boost uh, as a talented punt returner as well. Oh, and here's... The, Just signed one of those guys. And here's my favorite, Brent. He's got some sticky feet. Sticky feet. And oily hips. Oily. Brent, <laughs> these hips are move. oily, man. Like, just like fluid, man. When he runs, <laughs> he, he, he's got like a, he's got like a lava lamp out there running. You know, just... <laughs> Just shapes. <laughs> How do you come up with this stuff? Oh, dude, off, Sticky off, off feet, the dome. Yeah, oily hips, and what was he? Double tap. Uh, has double tap foot quickness. Double tap foot quickness. Yeah. Oily hips yeah. and sticky feet. Yeah. Now I think I, I like my comparison better of a lava lamp. Lava I lamp. think I should be a scout. You should be a scout. And then suggestions. Last, yeah, and then last pick is uh, running back number ninety uh, one ninety four, going with Jason McClellan. Out of Alabama, don't we, really have a lot. When we get bulky but. on someday on the show, we got to ask him <laughs> about all these. When we get him on, we got to ask him about all these. Uh, Just make sure I'm not around. He's not going to come if I'm here, Brent. I don't think he likes me. No, I don't know. I mean, I, I've been kind of. I don't want to say mean, but hey, call it casino. Yeah, I think he'd, be, he'd, he'd come on anyway. Really? I mean, right. I don't know if he'd come on. But I'm just saying, I don't think he's worried about that. I know. Because uh, then we'd just ask him how he graded you out. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll really get some laughs. <laughs> but I would love to have a guy on. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we get Caldwell on or something. So they'd be like, do you guys really use these terms? Yeah, yeah. For real. Like, do you guys have meetings and really use these terms? <sighs> do you think they do? Honestly? They probably do think it's cutesy stuff in a way you know do you just get like so Code bored board? by it's like mundane year in and year out where you have to kind of like invent new ways to That's describe what I, well what i'm wondering is in in writing when you're writing this stuff do you kind of say it that way to so people can um Brent, identify uh, but if you're in normal conversation with everybody knowing what's going on yeah yeah and say hey he's got bad hips or he's got good hips brent if i'm a if i'm trent bulky and one of my scouts says hey this guy's got some really oily hips we'll see you later <laughs> yeah. hey Thanks for stopping by. We're going to go on and move on from you. Good luck in your future endeavors. Just say he's fluid. He has, you know, his hips are good, whatever the case may be. I don't need to hear oily hips. Oily hips. Yeah. All right. So Speaking of uh, moving on, we got to move on. Okay. I got to get out of here. Go ahead, yeah, get, get to that here, Trevor Lawrence uh, news conference at 1 o'clock. Hold it for me uh, if you can. Uh, Jaguars. 
Uh, we will uh, take a timeout. But, Shock your mock presented by Everbank. Uh, we will continue tomorrow. What do we got? And by the way, names? so the, so that was uh, Sawyer Kimbrough's mock draft. Congratulations, man. Didn't really take much, but you are moving on <laughs> yes, who beat, to the next round. Who beat the Miami Hurricanes, Yeah, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll be back in uh, Austin and Nick. We'll put a bow on the show and the Iceman. We got a news conference at 1 o'clock. Uh, get ready for the Kelly Cup playoffs. We'll take you to practice tomorrow with the Jacksonville Iceman as well. And then they play on Thursday night as the playoffs begin in the ECHL. It's a new logo, new branding, but with Bold City Heating and Air, it's an old school approach. One of the few locally owned and operated air conditioning businesses left in Jacksonville. And with that comes the perks we miss in the big business world. It's every customer counts kind of service from when these trucks have pulled up to my home over the last couple of years and when they pull into your driveway as well. From communication to pricing to the actual service, everyone at Bold City Heating and Air cares about you. You know who's coming to your house. You know they will be well trained and they will respect your home. Air conditioning convenience at BoldCityAC.com. The folks at Bold City Heating and Air also know your AC unit is important and can be a big expense. That's why they have financing to help. No payments, no interest for 12 months on new systems. $50 off any repairs. Stay safe, stay comfortable with Bold City Heating and Air at BoldCityAC.com. Homegrown in your hometown. Bold City Heating and Air. Do you have ugly concrete around your home or business? Are you tired of concrete that is cracked, stained, or just plain ugly? Spartan Coatings range of products provides a surface that is non-porous, easy to clean, antibacterial, and slip resistant, all with superior durability. Living in Florida nearly my whole life, I know the toll our weather can take on a garage floor. That's why I had Matt and the crew from Spartan Coatings transform this space. And the best part, they did it in one day. It was a professional process from step one. The polyurea and polyaspartic system provide superior flexibility, is four times stronger than epoxy coatings, and will withstand temperatures high and low. Plus, it comes with a 20-year warranty. Whether it's a garage floor, patio, pool deck, driveway, or your interior flooring, Spartan Coatings has you covered. To get started transforming your ugly concrete surfaces, call 904-671-3930 or visit Spartan Coatings dot com today for your free quote in northeast florida we love hanging out on the back patio maybe grilling out lunch or dinner with the family enjoying the good weather or maybe enjoying the big game on the tv or maybe your favorite team in town the action sports jacks team this is great except for when it's really hot or the bugs start coming out but what if you didn't have to worry about that Titan Outdoor Solutions will make your outdoor area a comfortable spot any time of the day, any time of the year. This makes too much sense. Titan Outdoor Solutions can give your home an upgrade. Customized pergolas, awnings, controlled shade, even retractable screens. The solution to beating the heat and the bugs and getting more use out of your home is Titan Outdoor Solutions. And this can even help prevent storm damage at your home. Living in Florida and living in your home is already good. Now make it great. Quality products, custom work, locally owned and operated. Visit TitanShuttersAndScreens.com or call 904-484-7580. Hey everyone, Olivia Tassley here from Action Sports Jacks to tell you all the different ways you can watch our new 24-7 network. Three easy steps. You don't even need a pen and paper to write it down. Step number one, download the app. Search Action News Jacks in your app store either on your phone or your smart TV. Then, once you're on the app, click on that little drop-down menu in the upper left-hand corner with the three little lines. That'll show you these options, and boom, right here. Click Action Sports Jacks 24-7, and you will be brought to our continuous stream channel. That app can be accessed through all these different platforms, whether you have Roku, Fire TV, Smart TV, Apple TV or Google TV, you can find our app. Now, if you don't have access to the app, don't worry, we still got you covered. We're across all social media platforms from Facebook, Instagram, X, YouTube, Twitch. We have a podcast channel. Plus, check out our short reels on our TikTok. Action Sports Jacks 24-7. It's on all the time and everywhere. 
It's the place we party in football season with Jaguars All Access. Welcome to String Sports Brewery, everybody. Say hello to our guest tonight. That is Trevor Lawrence. You can bring your party or event to String Sports Brewery in Springfield any day and any time. Rehearsal dinners, corporate events, birthdays here at Strings. You can enjoy the inside area and the outside area. Good for any weather, good for any occasion. Watch the games, play the games, shoot some hoops, beer, yeah, they have that. Plenty of choices. And sure, this is a brewery, but Strings is also a restaurant, and the food is fantastic. A full menu made from scratch meals. And if you need String Sports Brewery to help with a party at your place, they cater too. Family, beer, food, sports, Spring Sports Brewery in Springfield. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show, streaming on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network. Welcome back to the Brent and Austin Show. Austin Lane here holding it down for the last segment as my co-host Brent Martineau is en route to the Jaguars facility. Trevor Lawrence is going to be talking with the media here in a little bit. And, you know, I I think me personally, is it going to have any kind of talking points that we'll talk about tomorrow, what Trevor said? Like, yeah, we're going to break it down. We're going to have all that video for you, the context, everything like that. But I'm not expecting anything too crazy in terms of, you know, any sound bites per se. But I am curious if if he's going to talk about it all, of who's calling the plays, number one. I think, you know, if you're Trevor Lawrence, do you talk about the weapons that you have right now? What do you see from them? Do you take it in another direction of saying, hey, the the more the merrier? I mean, it is all about Trevor Lawrence at the end of the day. So I'm curious about that. And then you know me. I'm a sucker for sports psychology. You know, I I say I have my sports psychology degree. Never went to psychology class one time. But I am curious to see of how he is treating this offseason and really how this whole team will be treating this offseason. We talked about this earlier on the show today. There's a slew of ways – that you can take it in terms of do you bring up last year? Do you use last year as extra motivation? It's funny. Regardless of any team that I was on in the National Football League, regardless of my college experience as well at Murray State, different coaches, different atmospheres, different locker rooms, but it was always the same message for me. And that was play next play. You know, good, bad, or indifferent You play next play, you don't look behind you, you look forward. And I'm all for that. But also I think that sometimes what gets lost, that kind of philosophy, is saying, hey, the past may not define us, but we can learn from it. So I'm not opposed to showing that Titans film if I'm Doug Peterson once again. I'm not opposed if I'm Trevor Lawrence in a press conference still bringing up the Tennessee Titans keeping us out of the playoffs last year. I'm not opposed to that because to me, any extra motivation is motivation. And that's the way I look at it. Now, let's be honest. We're talking about NFL players here. We're talking about grown-ass men making millions and millions of dollars. Do you really need any extra added motivation to do your job to the best of your abilities? Well, no, absolutely not. And I think any player in that locker room would say the same thing. But my point is, it has to be more than just self-motivation. It has to be more than just every player saying, all right, I'm playing for reason A or reason B or reason C. Eventually, any great team, there has to be a collective of a goal and a collective of a motivation. The Kansas City Chiefs this year, their motivation is clear. They're trying to be the first team in in NFL history to win three Super Bowls in a row. That's expectation. That's the talk of of that locker room. That'll be the talk in training camp. What I think the talk needs to be in Jacksonville, in that Jaguars locker room, is you guys did not achieve what you're supposed to do. You guys got embarrassed by a hapless Tennessee Titans team. And while it's going to be a new season, we can't go back there. And I've been very adamant about my thoughts on Doug Peterson coming from that Andy Reid coaching tree. And once again, maybe some analytics, the athletic, whatever you want to say wants to do this work for me because, you know, too busy, don't have time to do it. But I am curious to see 
how Doug Peterson's teams do when they are considered quote unquote more of an underdog, when nobody is putting them as a front runner, when they're kind of stacked against the odds a little bit, as opposed to a team that is a front runner, that has high expectations. Because I think in Philadelphia, he may have had some problems when that team had high expectations. And obviously, look no further, had high expectations. Oh, yeah, Jaguars going to win the division. Trevor takes a step forward. Cal Ridley comes in. Everything is going to be all hunky-dory. Well, it wasn't. You didn't go to the division, and now all of a sudden the Houston Texans are the toast of the AFC South. So there's going to be a lot of storylines, a lot of added motivation there if Doug Peterson, if Trevor Lawrence, if the leaders of this locker room dare to use it. I'll be curious to see. I think the first sign is going to be in that Trevor Lawrence progress in the press conference, and then obviously later on when Doug Peterson speaks with the media, which I believe is going to be on Thursday. To wrap up the show here, Brent Martineau mentioned this a little bit. We talked about players in terms of star power and everything, and we somehow got on the lines of, of, of Steph Curry, right? Steph Curry, greatest shooter of all time. Sorry, Brent. Sorry, Larry Bird, but the stats speak for themselves, okay? Greatest shooter of all time, and I'm a Ray Allen guy. Still, Steph Curry, greatest shooter of all time. And I don't think necessarily really a polarizing figure just because I think it's hard to hate him. Like, Brent didn't like him for a while because of the whole mouth guard thing. You want to chew on something? Chew on something, man. You know, more power to you. You drop 30 points a night, go and chew on something. Gum, mouth guard, broccoli, whatever, man. Chew on something. I don't care. My point, though, is is that even though you're not necessarily a polarizing individual and I think that your skills speak for themselves, does it mean that you've come a long way in terms of who you were in the past? And let the video be a lesson to anybody out there. It's not how you start. It's not how you – it's how you finish. And, Nick, I think we have this video. I echoed this a little bit. Back in my day, I say back in my day in college, there was a song by Asher Roth called I Love College. Now, Asher Roth was essentially a one-hit wonder rapper. I believe he was from Michigan State, if I'm I'm not mistaken. And it was a big song for spring breaks and everything alike. Well, Steph Curry's alma mater chose to do a rendition of this I Love College video, or I Love College song. And lo and behold, the greatest shooter in NBA history MVP, All-Pro, NBA champion, Steph Curry, in college, is in this video. Let's go to Nick in the daytime to play some of this footage, please. On my way, put up some hearts for Valentine's Day. Time is champion, not the union. We got Big John and Miss Sharon. The outpost might be open later, but stop I'll real quick. You can't stop. This is the greatest shooter of all time. All right, please continue. Dijor is all I'm here for. Skip class today, and all I could say is, um. That comments last night was awfully crazy. I stayed there so late. Some chocolate froyo, big head burrito. I have about three plates. Eat chick parm and drink my coke. Chill with friends and crack some jokes. Arrive at five, kicked out at eight. And that concludes this common state. I believe he'll be featured one more time in the song coming up here, folks. Please be patient. So even though even the chefs get into this, school, wearing a Beethoven shirt. An or two. Um, of course, I learned commons rules, like don't fall down. They'll laugh at you. Yikes. Their Sunday brunch is golden rule, and last night's girl thinks you're a tool. Awkward eye contact just isn't cool, and your boys call out, oh, way too cool. Where okay, we're, we're all good. I, mean, I think we've seen enough. So, what did we learn today, everybody? On Bretton Austin. I think we learned that it's not how you start, okay? Maybe you're at Davidson making a, I guess, helping out a friend do a class project or helping out a friend going viral to an Asher Roth song and you rap and it's a little cringy, okay? And that's okay because you know why? 
you're the best shooter in the world. And you look back on this now, and you can have a laugh. Now, is it cringy? Yes. Is it awkward? Absolutely. Do I kind of sit in my seat and just kind of clinch myself? Yeah, I do. But you know what, man? I almost like Steph Curry more <laughs> from this video. Because you went from there, and now you're here. Steph Curry, to me right now, like the, the transition, the evolution of Steph Curry then to now should be like Russell Wilson. But it's not. And yeah, Russell Wilson, married to Sierra, congratulations. But I still see the Russell Wilson awkward subway commercials. Okay? I still see the awkward Russell Wilson interviews. Some people can evolve and some people are stuck in their ways. Not saying one's better than the other, but I think we have to give Curry props in terms of going from that video to now being <laughs> the greatest shooter of all time. Let's see what the comments are saying real quick. Not how you start. Yep, laughing there from Duval TV. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, Nick, Nick in the, in the daytime. You got any comments real quick about that, Stefan? Number one, you ever see that video before? And number two, your thoughts if you can talk to me real quick. No, I've never seen that before, so that's totally a throwback for me. And it is wild to go from that at Davidson, such a small school, to being – like you said, the greatest shooter of all time in, in, in NBA history. It's, it's such a wacky transition and a wacky arc. So here's the funny thing about that video. And I guarantee a lot of people don't even know that video exists. Maybe we just like re like drop something out there in social media. Maybe it picks up a little bit. Maybe the Brett and Austin get that big bump that we've been searching for. Set aside for me body shaming Patrick Mahomes, which helped out, I guess. But, I, you know, I cry at night. <laughs> um... I think it says a lot in terms of, once again, I say it's not how you start, it's how you finish, but also that video, when I first came across that when I was in college, I knew who Steph Curry was, but like nobody was talking about Steph Curry and his skill set. Like I just knew that video because, well, it was the video. And I knew Steph Curry was in it because, well, Steph Curry was like in the, NBA tur in the NCAA tournament. I didn't know like what he was going to turn into. Nobody did. And that's why people, I think, forget that video even exists because, like, that video is forever tattooed in my brain because when Steph Curry got to the NBA and started doing his things, my mind always went back to that video of just how cheesy and how awkward it was. But once again, for the last time, I, I've said it at nauseum, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Listen, I'd be remiss here on Brett and Austin if we didn't talk a little hockey real quick. Shout out to my Detroit Red Wings last night. For, for making some history, if you will. Down by one with one minute to go. Goalie pulled, and what do they do? Uh, they send it to overtime with Lucas Raymond. And what happens in overtime? Oh, Lucas Raymond comes in and scores another goal. If the Detroit Red Wings win tonight and the Washington Capitals lose tonight, the Wings will be in the playoffs for the first time in which I believe in eight years. And it's much like the Yankees, right? It's much like the Lakers or the Celtics. The playoffs are just better when the polarizing teams are in them. And say what you want about the Red Wings. I know there's not a lot of hockey fans here in the chat, but you either love the Red Wings, like I do, or you hate the Red Wings. And I think being a pol like you need polarizing teams. You, you need teams that you either love or you hate. You need the New York Yankees, okay? You need the Conor McGregors. You need the Los Angeles Lakers. And heck, you even need LeBron, like... I make jokes all the time about this. LeBron James, whether it's a playing tournament or going to the playoffs, you need him there, right? Because you need the old heads that are going to come in like me and say, he's no Michael Jordan. He ain't no MJ. He ain't no GOAT. And then you need the young heads that are going to say, well, hey, look at how old this guy is. He's still playing at a very high level, filling a, 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 a box score, assists, rebounds, doing it all. Anthony Davis, yes, is a good player himself, but come on, let's be honest, it's still LeBron's team. So, like, you still need those storylines with LeBron James, and you'll probably get that storyline next year as well when Bronny chooses to go to the NBA draft, and we'll see what happens there. Like that, that'll be a storyline in itself. And the NBA playoffs are starting soon, and I'm excited for those as well. You know, Milwaukee Bucks faltering right now. Doc Rivers down bad. 76ers, maybe making a little bit of a push right now. Can anybody stop Boston? And then in the West, I mean, you got the Joker. You got the OKC Thunder out of nowhere taking the top seed. SGA, Chet Holmgren. 
I'm biased, but I think it's a really great time right now to invest in the NBA and become an NBA fan if you're not already. If you're a casual NBA fan, get more than casual because there's a lot of great players. And, yeah, I, you still have your LeBrons. You have your Giannis's. You have your Embiid's. But like we talked about earlier in the show today, you got guys like Ant. You got guys, you know, like even like Chet Holmgren, who is starting to make a name for himself in commercials now. Once again, hey, Chet, don't sing, right? Because we learned this from Stephen Curry. We learned it from Curry early on in his career. You don't got to sing to get money, okay? You don't got to sing and help out friends. Chet Holmgren, you're in the pros now. Let's stop singing. But him and SGA playing at a very, very high level right now. So... NHL playoffs starting pretty soon. I'm excited. NBA playoffs starting pretty soon. I'm excited. Trevor Lawrence talking tomorrow. I'm double excited. We're talking today. We'll have the audio tomorrow. I'm double excited for that. A lot of sports are happening. Oh, by the way, we got the NFL draft coming up pretty soon as well. And I'm not going to buy into the rumors of the cornerback being the, the, the top spot. Real quick, Nick at night. I'm sorry, Nick in the daytime. If you got to put your money down right now before we leave the show here, Jags taking cornerback, offensive lineman, or are they going wide receiver? It's like corner. Corner? Corner is what I want. You got to have somebody opposite of uh, of Campbell, of Tyson. You got to have somebody opposite back there. Okay. Okay. Brent's not going to like that. I, I mean, I'm not. You know, Nick, you had a really great day today. And then you had to drop yeah. that on me in like the last two minutes of the show. And now I have to reevaluate everything of what <laughs> we look for in a producer. But. It is what it is, man. Are we getting ready to get out of here, Nick? Yeah, yep, we are. Nick, it's been a time and a half till you brought up the cornerback position, but I appreciate you being here, man. Nice job today. Appreciate it. Thanks for helping us out. Are you here tomorrow or is Hamby here tomorrow? Uh, Hamby's back in tomorrow. All right, we're going to the bullpen, going back to the GA. Going to bring back in Hamby tomorrow. Nick, we'll see you when we see you. Uh, Rocky Top. And uh, for Brent Martineau, I'm Austin Lane. Stay casual. We'll see you around, and hey, <clears throat> go Wings.